evening. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? A motion in pursuit to general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104 of the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County. I move to we meet in closed session to consider matters related to negotiations and to perform administrative function. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to go into closed session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. All the opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. We will see you at 6 o'clock. Thank you. Ish. Thank you. And we are back to our work session at the Queen Anne's County Board of Education, Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. On the agenda is our presentation for Educational Facilities Master Plan. What about opening the meeting pledge? Um, you know, on well, work sessions, we don't normally do that, sir. Okay. Thank you for bringing it up. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Thank you for your time this evening. For the record, my name is Carla Pullen. I'm the facilities planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I am here this evening just for informational purposes. And I want to talk to you about the Educational Facilities Master Plan. You will be receiving a document, which is a draft of this year's Educational Facilities Master Plan. My goal tonight is just to let you know what that document is. Many of you are gonna remember this from years past and for the most part, the document is going to look very similar to what you've seen. Uh, tonight, I just wanna outline the role of our educational facilities master plan in the state funding process, give you a schedule for when we need to submit this document because it is a state mandated document and then let you know that I'll be back in two weeks to request your approval of that document as well. So, our educational facilities master plan is part of the annual capital improvement program. And this consists of two different submissions. So the first is the educational facilities master plan. The second is the capital improvement plan. The educational facilities master plan, we submit that in July. It's a long range plan. We look at it every year and make updates. We're looking specifically at our enrollment and our enrollment projections and how that has changed within the past year. We look at what facility needs we are going to require based on those projections. And then we start to outline our future projects. In October, I'll be back to see you about the capital improvement plan or our CIP. And that's really the meat of the dollar request that we have every year. Um, that looks at the upcoming fiscal year. So in October, we'll be looking at fiscal year 2022. We project out our funding needs for future years. So we really do that master planning to see what dollar amounts we are going to need in upcoming years. We establish timelines for all of our projects. We look at the facility needs and we prioritize those based on what projects need to happen first. And then we look at what state funding will be available and what local funding will need to request. As I mentioned before, this is a document that is required by the state and this is just the parts of Comar that require that. The components of the plan, we have a cover and introduction. Then we look at the educational goals for the school system as well as the mission, the core values, we look at curriculum and we look at the methods of instruction. We begin to dive into our policies such as how we organize our schools and our grade levels. We look at the logistics of transportation. Redistricting, if necessary, is outlined in this document. Under enrollment and capacity, you'll see all of our current enrollment projections and we make sure that these concur with both the Maryland Department of Planning and the Queen Anne's County Department of Planning and that they are all within a reasonable tolerance of one another. There's a big community analysis piece that looks at <coughs> demographics in Queen Anne's County. 
We look at migration trends, projections for those that will be moving in and leaving the county, and any changes in infrastructure. We do a current facility inventory and update information on any of our buildings. And we look at the utilization, how much space is still available in our buildings and what are we going to need to do for maximum capacity coming up. Quick timeline for this plan. We talked to you about it in June. We submit it to the state in July. And again, for the CIP part of that, we come to you in September to discuss it. We send it to the state in October and between October and February, we start to work with the county government on what that piece, the, the money that will be required uh, from their allotment. If you recall, for the current fiscal year, we don't have available funds until July 1st. So on July 1st, we will have fiscal year 2021 funding that we will be, uh, that'll be available for our use. And for planning and design, that is not state funded. It is only funded by the county and we usually look at one to two years in advance of when a construction project will begin so that we have plenty of time to plan it out thoroughly. We don't have anything in the pipeline right now, do we, Ms. Pullen? Just studies okay, that are currently you. in the pipeline and systemic projects. So the next steps uh, within the next, yes. Uh, what triggers a longer term plan to build things. You know, we, it's like planning two to three years in advance or one to two years in advance. Are the projections uh, also following that trend? That is part of it. So we look at a number of different things. One of the first things that we look at is the facility assessment that we had done in 2016, which helped to lay out for the next 20 years what projects we would need to look at in a specific time frame, mostly from a preventative maintenance standpoint, but also to let us know how we could do our master planning. This document is one of the big documents that we use. This is where we really this begin county, to study. The, the demographic that has the largest population growth is 55 and older. And they, uh, the, the building process does not pay a education fee in order to have this. So that attracts retirees and so forth. So it seems that, uh, that we're not going to get the influx of students that uh, we would typically see in a community this size. What we're actually seeing and have been over the last few years in the enrollment projections is that over the next five to seven years, we'll see a small decrease in population, but that it starts to pick up again as well. So we follow that pretty closely to make sure that Four we're seasons, projecting. Uh, Evandale, uh, they're all, I mean, we, they're huge and they're all 55 and older. So it's gonna skew somehow uh, our planning process, I think. That's a possibility, and we've also been carefully well, be watching. Taken into consideration, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely, and we carefully watch uh, the growth and what will be happening on Ken Island with the sewer project as well, because that's another piece um, that just has some uncertainty to it. Well aware of the Ken Island sewer. Yeah, let's not get into that right now. <laughs> So really the next steps, just to let you know, uh, you'll have a draft for review within the next week. By the 29th, if you have any major comments, questions, anything that I can answer, just reach out to me. And then at the July 1st meeting, we'll talk about any final questions that you have, any modifications that you're requesting. I'll ask for your approval and then we'll turn around and submit that the next day. It might be interesting if any surprise data shows up to know about that ahead of the meeting. Yes. So what I will include, um, we are working on the formatting so that you will be able to see anything that has changed from last year's document. So you'll be able to point those out, but we'll also give you a summary sheet just to tell you anything that is very different between last year's plan and this year's. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Pullen. So much. And I think Mr. Page and Ms. Forbes are outside waiting for us. Thank you, Ms. Pullen.
Good evening, Mr. Page. Good to see you. Ms. Forbes, all the way in the back. How you doing? <laughs> so the learning management system, sir. Yes, uh, good evening, President Harper. For the record, my name is Greg Pluski. I'm a deputy superintendent. And uh, this evening, uh, we have an information um, uh, presentation that we would like to provide to you uh, around a learning management system. <coughs> so uh, there are two purposes, really three. Uh, one is to provide background information. Uh, two is to provide a recommendation uh, on a vendor, which is also will later on be an action item, and then to discuss uh, actions and next steps. Uh, but first of all, I just want to let you know uh, and introduce two of my colleagues. Uh, Mr. Michael Page, who is our supervisor of uh, physical education, science, health, environmental literacy. And I'm also, which is, I know, it's a really long title. Uh, and also, uh, a lot of work. And also, uh, my colleague, uh, Mrs. Julie Forbes, who's our supervisor of accountability, uh, assessment, and data management. And uh, they have been gracious enough to uh, co lead this project. Um, and they're going to share with you the work that they've done uh, over the last uh, several weeks. But to frame the conversation, I want to start with some of our lessons learned um, during COVID 19. And specifically as, you know, uh, March 13th, the 12th, we got the news, we started on March 13th up until last Friday, we've learned a lot. Um, and, and I wanna thank our administrators, uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank our teachers and our community for their patience uh, as we've all had to learn and, and turn on a dime. But we've learned a lot. Um, some of the most important lessons that we've learned from an instructional standpoint is we have a lot of different systems that are not integrated. So what that means from a teacher standpoint is they have to log in and out of multiple systems. So for an example, they might have to log into their grade book. They might have to log out, log into an assessment system. So there's a lot of jumping around. Um, we've heard that from uh, administrators. We've heard that from teachers. We heard that from parents. A big lesson learned is inconsistencies in how we were delivering instruction um, from face to face, not face to face, but from a virtual, from a Google Meet to uh, maybe just an email and, and some kind of contact. So we knew there was some difficulty with that. Uh, it was difficult for us to be able to track student engagement and attendance. We don't necessarily have a system that is set up to be able to do that. That will be a requirement uh, in our recovery plan from the Maryland State Department of Education. Uh, as we all recognize through this, we've learned that there were uh, some huge inequities equities as it related to technology. Um, we recognize that there were varying capabilities and the capacity of our teachers to be able to deliver online instruction. I would probably say the biggest challenge was being able to turn on a dime and transition from a face-to-face -face environment to a completely distance learning environment. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Page, and I'm also going to turn it over to Mrs. Forbes. Yes, sir, Mr. Anderson. Uh, <clears throat> Well, I think this was a, a critical period of time to learn. Uh, I think from the standpoint of the taxpayers, our students have had Chromebooks for five years. And maybe this was a godsend to find out how to, to use those and all the attendant other issues. That's a really good point. Um, Mr. Anderson, and, and certainly thank to our, our commissioners and, and having the foresight in our board five years ago, um, we were we are and continue to be and we're in a much better place than, than some of our colleagues around us uh, that did not have Chromebooks and there was a significant gap. So I concur. Uh, I think the transition from a student to be able to still engage, uh, I definitely concur that we're much better in a situation because our students have had exposure to that and our teachers have had exposure to that. The, 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 the loose end. Sure, sure. I, I, I would definitely agree. We had that meeting in this room in 2015. Well, it, was a hard, there, it was a heated discussion, but luckily county commissioners have been gracious enough to it, it keep was, it going for us. A lot of foresight. I wanted to mention something to yes, in particular to you, Mr. Poluski. I've been hard on you. Um, it, it's frustrating you know, as a board member and as a parent. And uh, so the stuff I come into you, came on to you these last few weeks has been 
level of frustration on the non-use of it the way it should be, the confusion, the blah, blah, and totally a lot of input from parents. So sure. just want to understand, it's just passion I was into, it wasn't against you personally. Um, and so I'm happy to hear that we've all learned lessons from this. The parents have learned, the teachers, you know, and I'm hopeful that the summer preparation for the fall, you know, you'll be, I'm sure you'll be instituting a lot of these lessons learned and where we go mm -hmm. from here. Because I know even as a parent, I intend to be a lot more strict with the way that my child is doing his work. Um, something simple like that. And I have the ability of being home. So the teachers, kudos to them. They, you know, to a person, I'm sure it's been difficult for them. They're not only trying to teach our children where I thought they could just do that full time. They've also got their own kids home that they didn't expect to have them sure. home, like they don't have them in the classroom. So there's a lot of lessons learned, and um, I, I look forward to to some of the changes that you know we can fix for the fall. I think everybody, and I appreciate your. All your you guys hard I, I appreciate your comments, uh, Captain Kelly. You know, as, a, as, as we're all public servants and, and we're here to serve and try the very best that we can when none of us had a lot of answers uh, and we're trying to figure it out and do the best we can, support our families, support our teachers. Um, so what I think you're going to see uh, that they're getting ready to present is, is going to be a vast improvement um, for parents, for students, for teachers. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. Great. Thank you. Mr. Poliski, would you use a wipe on your area? Thank you so much. Just keeping it going. Thank you, sir. All right. Hello, Ms. Forbes. Hi. Good to see you. You too. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Poliski. Um, also, uh, I would like to say good evening to everyone, board members, Dr. Kane, Thank you, the team. Um, Today we are uh, discussing a, uh, the learning management system. And um, the learning management system uh, really allows us to organize all of the different facets of the educational process into one platform. And as you can see with this infograph, uh, this LMSs really allow us to integrate all of our instructional tools, they allow us uh, an enhanced communication between students and teachers, uh, collaboration between teachers and teachers, and actually communication all around uh, is going to be greatly enhanced with an LMS. Uh, LMSs are um, utilized through the use of multiple uh, phones, computers, different technologies. So uh, we do have the Chromebooks for all our students, but uh, this particular LMS that we're pre presenting today allows uh, students, parents, teachers to work through multiple forms of, of technology, which is a great enhancement to what we would be able to do. Uh, data analysis and also professional uh, pro personalized learning in terms of differentiation. It also allows us um, for interportability, which Mr. Pluski was highlighting, Interportability is the ability to have multiple systems communicating and going to one, one centralized location for our educational process. And it also greatly enhances our abilities to do assessments. Um, we've, we've, as, as you all will see in this presentation, we fielded a lot of questions about how student work is, is being managed and how it's being implemented. And you'll see from this presentation that um, you know, we'll greatly be able to enhance that. So these are the functions of, of most LMSs. Today what we're presenting to you is a particular LMS that we have been uh, really looking hard at. Uh, we've looked at several LMSs, but the particular one that really has standed out, stood out for us is Schoology. Uh, Schoology is a premier K-12 uh, LMS. It is uh, recently acquired by PowerSchool in 2020. And what it, this allows us to do is um, PowerSchool, we utilize PowerSchool's solutions already and many of their systems in, to, in turn, um, also, I'm sorry, our student information system, uh, Performance Matters, and many other platforms. It also allows us to um, quickly integrate with our gradebook. So when teachers are creating assessments, these grades flow right into that 
system. And so there's not a lot of third party communication between the teachers don't have to go from one system to the other. Everything is centralized. And again, I've, and you'll see that this is a common theme, communication and conferencing. That is a, a, a huge uh, advantage for us going forward. Not only, uh, and this is something that I really wanna make clear, is that this system is not just beneficial for distance learning. This system is greatly beneficial for in-class uh, to the traditional classroom too. Um, and so many of our colleagues around, around the state uh, have, a, have adopted or are looking to adopt Schoology. Um, several others are the, the, the state of Delaware has adopted Schoology uh, for all of their schools and many other jurisdictions around uh, the country, country are also doing the same. So in order to gather some feedback from our different stakeholders, we began an uh, engagement process where we held a variety of focus groups. Um, so we started with our teachers, some of the accountability staff who work in my office, administrators, teacher specialists, and unit one representation as well. We really wanted to get a broad group of folks um, who could really let us know if this system would meet their needs because ultimately we're looking for a solution. So a solution for uh, staff, students, and parents, yes. What period of time did this collaboration occur? Uh, obviously it occurred partly in the COVID uh, shutdown. Uh -huh. uh, when did it begin? Ooh, it's it's been really the last couple of weeks. It's really been over the last two to three weeks that we've been in this process. It's been moving pretty quickly. Um, and so we have been hearing just informally from staff and parents, you know, there needs to be a better solution to help support our schools. But we wanted to make sure that what we were hearing was, was really accurate. So we started reaching out to different stakeholders. We also held a parent guardian focus group. Um, we offered a focus group to our administrators and supervisors and pre presented at the ANS meeting. And overall, our total participants of those focus groups were 65. We had 50 staff members and 15 parents who actually attended. Of course, we invited more. So we felt like we had a nice representation. Any um, input from students? We, we did not. We did not have student so input. I was thinking some of the graduated, the graduated students, particularly in the high school, they would be great to mm -hmm. get their input. You're absolutely right, yeah. Okay. That's How did the parents and guardians get ch chosen? Was it people you knew or was a serve, a, a, a thing sent out so you get a walk? I mean, a lot of times when you do things like this, it's who you choose, what answers you get. And do we get to some people that are both very focused on this and some people that maybe aren't but need to learn and we could learn by what people don't know? Mm -hmm. Mr. Page, I'll let you answer that one because you work yes. closely with the parent group. Yes, so the uh, parent group, we did. We actually did two things there. So the parent group, we sent out uh, an email to our principals, and then the principals provided us with, with names of, of uh, parents that would want to participate. So we sent an email to our principals. The principals then in turn gave us parent information. We contacted them, and then they were able to attend. So it was, we chosen, also, it was chosen by pr principals and new parents. Yes, sir. Did we get a, you, you, do you feel comfortable? We got a wide range of what we needed to get good response from to hear the whole perspective of everything? I, I believe so, yes. We also, um, just so you know, and just so the board knows, we also within our, sur many of our employees are our parents. Mm -hmm. So within our survey uh, for our employees mm -hmm. and staff members, there was a question in there that, that related to that. If you are a parent, how would you foresee this as mm -hmm. an advantage? So, I, I, you know, it, it helps me a lot when I get people that aren't associated with the school system because there's a different view of it. Right. And, they, and we can educate them and also they can educate us of what they feel we are or are not doing to help them understand because we're all in this together. And I just find when you get a better variety, the boat rises easier than just trying to get, mm -hmm. you know, ones that are, and everybody does it. You're comfortable with certain people. You know, you know them, you know your principals. The principals know the, the PTA president. I understand that, I get that. Right. But do they know, that? are they getting the whole diverse group? That's what concerns me some when we look at stuff. When we get, you know, when you say you've got a group and, you know, we got what, 8,000 students and if we only have 15 parents, that's a very small minority. Mm -hmm. We did, uh, we invited 28. And I can say based on the questions and the parents who participated and the guardians, we certainly were challenged with questions. So I would yeah. say it was a group who came in 
with, with differing views of maybe the experience with the continuity of learning and also just with learning management systems. So we, we had a lot of good questions thrown at us um, that, that we were able to work with um, the folks at Schoology to address to make sure it's really something that parents feel like is going to be a solution for them as well. But I, I absolutely agree with you because you want to hear from everyone and make sure it's going to mm -hmm. be something that's going to... I mean, you, you hear from the people that like you right. and you hear from the people that don't like you. Yeah. And also you need to hear from the people that just, mm -hmm. you know, the everyday person that's just working every day, mm -hmm. trying to teach our kids. Teachers have the same issues. They're home teaching. Their kids are here. But it's, it's a wide variety, not just the ones that are well, this far or that far. I need, you know, get a mm -hmm. good, good concern. You feel we did. We did, yeah. Again, based on the questions, we've really felt like from elementary to high school, we had representation. And again, the questions, I think for many, and, and Mr. Page, you can jump in as well, but I felt like for many of them, a learning management system was a new, something new for them. And so they were able to compare the experience they had this year, and then based at looking at this tool, how it could potentially solve some of the challenges they had. And that was the feedback we received. Mm -hmm. How sure are we that we have surveyed uh, the representative community that we intend to incorporate in this service? There are a lot of folks uh, who most likely would shy away from participating for fear that they may look like they aren't well, uh, not educated, but well adapted to life in the cloud. Uh, are we sure we reached out far enough in the community so those folks can have input and we incorporate what it would take to build their comfort. So I think that, um, and I do know without saying any names, I do know some of the parents who were um, on the committee and they were not, if the concern is whether or not the parents were ones that would say, oh, whatever you say is going to work, I assure you that was not the situation. Good. And so there were some parents who are quite vocal and we wanted to be sure that some of those parents were on the, um, on the committee. Um, did we have an opportunity to reach out to, you know, half of our parent population? No, there, there certainly was not um, a need to do that or the time to do that. But I think we've said three times now that we're pretty confident that we had a wide range of, of parents and, and some very vocal parents at that. I've been, you know, concerned that we include everybody, particularly with something that, like this that uh, is new age. Well, it's not so new age. It's new age for well, Queen Anne County, me. but it is not new age. It's just we're one of the last districts in the state to get it. Being um, the oldest but, person in the room, I assure, well, I'm, I'm not even going to mention, but <laughs> I assure you that it's new age to me, and I'm delighted to see us move this way. Thank you. But, I mean, this, I mean, I, I like what I'm hearing, but I also got, as a board member, got phone calls and emails on questions about how we're going to do something like this. I would have loved to know that this was going out earlier so I could have sat there and said, look, call you, call Dr. Kane. If you're a parent, call your principal. If you're interested in this, here's one way to get involved. I think that helps out a lot. I was not aware of this until this meeting right well, now. I think we did, we've talked about it for a number of meetings, and I believe that I'm not sure if it was you or, or Captain Kelly who at our last meeting asked what it was mm -hmm. and what an LMS was. But I, did, I, I asked what it was, but I didn't know we were sending this survey out to sit there and put a group together to, you know, put a, you know, this and put out, because later on down our thing, we're going to vote on if we buy this system or not. I think what the important thing is, is that we included parents. Mm. Um, I'm just saying that, if, you know, when would the, I'm just speaking as one board member, maybe the other board members have a different view of it. When I hear from people, I like to tell them ways they can get involved. And this, to me, would have been one way to say, if you're, you know, I have some concerns, call Dr. Kane. This is the people are heading up, our supervisors. And I don't usually get supervising, but I give them your name. You're the one that's going to make the decisions. And then you can sit there and say, you know, go from there. But I just, just, you know, be helpful to show that we are working on this, you know, as a cooperative thing. And everybody has a, everybody has a voice. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, please. And so I'm going to share the results of our survey. So, um, so first we'll start with a staff focus group. 
And so of those who participated, this captures those who then completed the survey, which was the majority. And you can see by the pie, it was a pretty even distribution. Um, we invited even sized groups to participate. Um, and then of those who were able to participate and complete the survey, but it still was a pretty good balance. So we felt like we had a nice representation from the various schools and levels. So we asked some open-ended questions and we also asked some questions that were really more on a Likert scale. So for the open-ended questions, the first question we posed, um, what do you see the advantages to implementing Schoology would be in the fall? And um, we, we tried to organize the main themes and the biggest thing that came up from our staff or that they really thought an advantage was the fact that it's one place. So it's one login, you go everywhere. Um, and that's the same for staff. That's the same for parents and guardians, and that's the same for students. So it's a place that you can go into all the other PowerSchool products, and it's also a place that you can bring in your Google Drive. You can access all these publishers, and again, in a pretty streamlined, user-friendly way um, that, that you can do all these things in one place. Because currently, like Mr. Paluski shared, staff are going to different places, parents are going to different places as our students. So again, it brings it into one centralized location. So that was one of the biggest pieces of feedback we received. And also people, um, our staff really felt the ability to use this tool d during distance learning was a huge advantage. Uh, is there pathway security? So any, pr I'm sure that already has been well discussed. So. Your smile tells yeah. me yes. <laughs> yeah, I also, um, I, I love data privacy. I also, um, I know, <laughs> I work on that in my office too. And one of the things I really love about Schoology is that because it's a, it's a power school product, so we're keeping all of our data in the same place. So we're not sending the data to different locations and it's with an API integration. And this is the only way you can have that integration is between PowerSchool and Schoology. No other LMS does that. So in terms of protecting our students and their privacy, um, it, it has a lot of big advantages that way. So how about data wise? How does that integrate with this or does it? Well, in terms of the data wise process, so our performance matters analytics, the data warehouse that we use, it's all within the PowerSchool system. So you can jump over to kind of our data warehouse analytics while you're in Schoology if you want to. So if you're a teacher, you can jump back and forth. So they can pull data from mm -hmm. the system right. to use as we make those decisions through our data wise okay. process. So what I'm understanding, the, the management system of it mm -hmm. connects everything yeah. and still allows you to tap into data wise to pull things up if you need to, to look at a student's mm -hmm. record and, and uh, performance levels. Yeah, absolutely. And it's okay. even going to give us more data to look at. Yeah, it's going to give yep. us more analytics and more data points. So data wise is not a program. If that's what you were thinking. Data no, I knew it wasn't. A, okay, it's a process. No, that we it, I, I knew it was a processor. I, I knew it, was, it held the data that, that reporting. Right, correct. No, okay. it doesn't hold data. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. It's, it's, a, it's an improvement process that we use. We can access the data for this. Okay. It's not a, it's not a program so or software. Be, this would be an enhancement to help it. Mm -hmm. The DataWise process, yes. Okay. Is, is this a, have a piece to it that could replace DataWise? No, DataWise isn't a program, it's not software, it's a way, it's a process that we use to go about looking at different data points to make decisions about teaching and learning. Right. But does this have that capability instead to it, replace it? I'm looking for it if we replace it. It's not a thing that you can replace with this. We pull data from here to have conversations that we use in our DataWise meetings. Okay. It, w it would be like saying, can we, you know, replace uh, a program for a process, a way of doing things. Data wise is a way of doing things. It's a process that we use. It's not something that's tangible okay. in a software program. It's a platform to increase the efficiency of people's work product. Mm -hmm. Has anybody bothered to figure out, is that going to save some money somewhere? I think the intention. Are we just going to do more? Yeah, I think the intangible costs, even just if you just look just at the fact that it's a power school product, the intangible costs of that, not needing to set up with another external system and have people do nightly manual imports and exports of data, that little piece alone for our IT staff is a huge um, savings. But I think efficiency-wise. Frustration of users mm -hmm. counts for something. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. is, is this, a, um, does this, <clears throat> let me understand and make sure I understand. Does this have a capability for a group meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay, it does. Right. Yeah. So the platform is PowerSchool, though. 
this is added onto that platform? Yeah. Or do I have that reversed? It's, oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Power School acquired Schoology. Right. So Power School has multiple solutions that we have already existing within our system, and we're just adding to that. Okay. So Power School owns a, a lot of the different solutions that we already utilize, not only in cur curriculum instruction, but also in finance and other aspects. Okay. So it's kind of like it's the umbrella, the ball, and inside the ball are all the little components. Mm -hmm. And this learning management system is just helping to make it faster, if more efficient, easier to use. Talk mm -hmm. to each other. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it's facil it's really facilitating the whole system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, us non-techies just throw small words at us. No, you know, <laughs> I didn't know much about learning management systems before this process, and I've told Mr. Page that. So it, it is, okay. it's it's really interesting, and once you start to dive into what the systems are capable of, it's really exciting. So it makes sense that you have questions. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> Good, thank you. Um, so, and then we also asked, what do you foresee would be the challenges to implementing Schoology in the fall? And the biggest challenge that came up, so again, we know we're working on a shortened timeline um, just because of the situation. So the biggest theme that came up with that was just making sure we have adequate training. This came up over and over, um, making sure we have the time and that adequate training for staff and also for students and parents and guardians so that we're training everyone on how to use this system. And there are training components for all the different um, groups. So is there a professional development program, a part of this learning yeah, system? Yeah, there's training involved. Um, there is also a professional development aspect to it, but um, we are gonna have a pretty robust professional development plan to make sure all users receive the training they need to then implement so they it. they have training correctly. videos and that kind of thing that people can mm -hmm. access on oh, their own? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you're, if you know, our super users, you'll have people who do self-paced courses on their own. We'll also have training for everyone. So there's just a variety. You can really differentiate for your staff based on if what they need. If you were to rank uh, each of those dots, mm -hmm. which is the one that will be the toughest to solve? Um, I mean, you do it? yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the training. We really wanna make sure everyone's trained well so they can use it and feel confident and be comfortable based on- Not afraid. Yeah, yeah, we have a different, we have a range of you know, technical abilities um, amongst all of our users, amongst our staff and our parents and our students. So we wanna make sure everyone gets what they need. If, if we go to distant learning in September, which there's a chance we will, mm -hmm. um, what about parents? Well, they have a heads up on this so they can start learning this over the summer and get some, something out to them so, you know, they can get some of the bugs out of, out of it and understand what they need to do. So when we hit September, we're on the ground running. There are parent, there basically there's, there's parent tutorials they can look at. There's kind of quick paced guided things. We'll probably create, I imagine would create some of our own guidance as well mm -hmm. um, to start letting parents know. But the, the, the nice thing with the system is, so it pulls all the information from PowerSchool, our student information system. And so it knows as a parent who your children are and it gives you access to those children. So that when a parent goes in, you, you're clicking on your child you're going into the virtual classroom. And it's a pretty user-friendly process. Um, and that was feedback we received from all of our users. So just to add to that, what, what the child sees and learns and how to interact and everything is the same way that the parent would also. So you can monitor and see what's cool. They're mm -hmm. very similar. So what the parent sees, and it's very, trans, very transparent to the parent, Okay, sees the same thing as the child and sees the same, well, many of the same things as the teacher. So they're all kind of learning a extremely, cons I would say, concise and, and the, same, the same framework. And, and same somebody platform. that's used to using a laptop computer on a, not a daily basis, but on, you know, communication source, it would be acceptable to that level person. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and I would even say somebody who's generally uses an app. Can do it. Or somebody who's utilizes a, a a, a social media as like Facebook, it, it, it will be very close to what they experience in those social media apps. And it's, it's, I think it's very easy to learn. Yeah. So you plan to activate for this fall, if all yes. things go well. That's our hope, That's yes. Our hope. Uh, but that would seem to be a good idea because we don't know what this fall is gonna look like. So this would greatly enhance our flexibility in running a school system. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
I have one. I would be concerned that last bubble too there, you know what? Because they do, everything is Google Classroom right mm -hmm. now. So what, how does this affect Google? I thought it was, they were linked. Yes, yeah, so, so Google Suite has many different features to it. So docs, sheets, um, forms, all of the, all of the items that the teachers have created in, and utilized within Google Classroom, they are ex very easily integrated into the system. So it's, it's just a link or it's just a, 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 a tap of a button to pull that stuff in. So everything that they've created within the Google Suite can go right into the system. And then they just use Google Classroom? No, they would, they would utilize the, the material that they have in Google Classroom or the material that they have created in the Google Suite to within the, the LMS Schoology. So they still would need to learn how to use that with the LMS, LMS system? Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's... But if, let's say I have a doc, those docs, I can just simply add into, into this, into my lesson, into oh, okay. course, whatever. It's, it's very easily pushed in. And, and actually, um, many systems that integrate over to Schoology, they move to Schoology because of the ease of integration from Google Classroom. So that's one of the, the big feedback that we, we've gotten is that it moves very seamlessly from Google Classroom into Schoology. Okay. Okay, and then this was a really important question for us. So we asked our staff, do you think the implementation of Schoology will further support you in delivering instruction in a remote learning environment for the upcoming school year? And 93.3% either agreed or strongly agreed. So that was very positive feedback we received from yeah. staff. Yeah, it was exciting. <laughs> All received. Yeah, and, and that again was our goal. We wanted to make sure that staff see it as a solution and, and and again we had you know many focus groups um and and the focus groups were two hours in duration so there were a lot lots of items covered the ones that disagree did they have some key issues that, that you, it's just misunderstanding or do you think there was a way that could drive them to the agree point because i mean they that's that's a big isn't it that's like what is it oh well, people about 10 10 percent with the numbers you had, that's not that many people. It was just a couple of people. Um, and yeah. Never mind. I just yeah. looked at the numbers. No, but I mean, <laughs> it, but it's a small number, so I mm -hmm. definitely think we have overwhelming support for it. But it would be interesting, is it, out of the small group, was anything major that they brought up that could be a, a problem or just maybe lack of understanding or just really take on Issues that could be, could be, you know, discussed and worked through. Uh, I believe most of the issues that were brought up in terms of that disagreement were are things that we can solve very easily okay yeah well that's important mm -hmm. okay parents focus yes so the parent focus group um, again we had uh, we had invited over 28 uh, parents uh, and we had 15 participants and um, we asked them very similar questions to what we asked our staff uh, what what are the major advantages to implementing Schoology and uh, some of the major highlights of those are, are similar to uh, the, the staff. It's one platform for everything. So again, this really centralizes our learning and centralizes where teachers are going in order to uh, uh, find instructional tools. They're not going to multiple platforms. They're not giving students multiple logins. They don't have multiple things to juggle. Everything goes through one platform. Uh, the capability with uh, mobile phones, that was a big thing uh, that parents can really just have their phone and they can access everything that their child is accessing. Um, it's again, it just works kind of like a, the social media platform. So that's really, really nice. And then the visibility, uh, this is this is a um, this is a platform that the parents can see pretty much everything that goes on. Um, there are some some settings that we will have to work through as a county to um, decide what is visible and what is not visible. But, you know, pretty much the parents can see the majority of what is happening within that classroom. They can see assignments. They can see what the child is doing. They can see uh, what the child has submitted. They can see if the, the teacher provided feedback. Um, they can see the feedback. So there is, there is a, um, they were very impressed, I would say, by the visibility and, uh, and, um, and also the communication there. 
The next slide uh, is, is what are some of the challenges, the learning curve. So parents were, um, you know, addressing some concerns about having to learn the system. Um, and as we had mentioned earlier, that there will be professional development sent out for that. And the lack of inter internet connectivity uh, for some families, as we know that, that that has been difficult through this time. But one of the major features of this is if you, um, if you can get your child's Chromebook to an access point, maybe outside the school in, in some way that the child can get to internet access, uh, they can actually download the entire lesson or unit, <coughs> go offline, complete all of the work, and then when they then go back to that site, all the work is then re-uploaded and then they can do that again. So this system really does, it, it would, uh, you know, require some travel, maybe you're getting to a spot where they can get internet access, but really that's a huge advantage for our families that they can get there, download it, go back, do their work, and when they come back, it's all uploads and know the student's and actually doing the work and not somebody else. Well, that's a problem with virtual okay. learning anyway. It's yes. not something that can be... I, some very smart students could start a little LLC and do all the work for other people now, you know. Uh, now that now it's it, it's out there, so we so, need to get a pathway. How how long does it take to download? Like yeah. when you said, I mean, if somebody's there, right. and a parent has to go and let's say they went into the Acme in Centerville or something. They say, let's stop by the high school. How long would it take to download it? So, so that really would depend on what material was Understand, provided, but right? Generally, so, I mean, I I don't know if I can give you an exact number I'm because talking, it, it's, it's, it's going to be, be it's, it's going to be fifteen depends. minutes or two hours. Yeah, I'd Depends on how big the, yeah. the attachments are that need to be downloaded. Right. I mean, well, so, I understand and how many, people, also are, depends how many on the, people are there? The connectivity of that that mm -hmm. that store or, or that facility, right? Yeah, so five people outside there waiting to download the same thing, and it's it's 20 pages of a, of a report. I mean, it could take a long time. I understand that. And the that, other thing, too, is, is we know these, and this is another great feature, feature of this platform, if we know that there are specific kids like Michael. Michael doesn't have access to internet and I know that he can't download mm -hmm. or he is doing that downloading. In this program, I can tailor make curriculum just for that young man. So I can, if I knew that Michael had this struggle or was having this difficulty with that, I would not have all of these materials in there that may, may take hours and hours of downloading. I can tailor make and differentiate his instruction so that it downloads very quickly and that Michael's still getting the same instruction that his peers are. I would think even in a AB day kind of situation, the teachers <coughs> learning how to use it, they could actually have time set aside at the end of class that students could be downloading mm -hmm. their homework for that night, you know, and then when yes. they come back two days later or whatever, I mean, we kind of have done some of that in the past already with the as I understand. I just think it gives them an idea, you know, somebody gets frustrated they're going to stop somewhere and they think it's going to take a half an hour and it takes two hours. Or if we knew it was going to take that long, which is nice to be able to change things around and make it a shorter period of time. But if they were in school and they knew they didn't have access, they didn't have access, they could sit there and then have it downloaded at school. If it's going to take two hours, this is a, a, a large document, then they could start doing it at school. I mean. Yeah, and another feature of that is if this child is having that. Mm -hmm issue stop stop the download send a message to the teacher and the communication all links in between there and the teacher again can differentiate that instruction so the child has a better opportunity to download that material because if i mean if they're in school they have access to internet yes that's so correct. you know i mean if if, if the, and there's are a certain number of people that don't have access and probably never will in queen Anne's county at some point at least have an ability to a program to serve as that you know person I think to f know how they feel a challenge is funding source. It's not a, any cost of, to the parents, correct? For, for this. No. So why would it? Why would they think that a challenge is a funding source? Because our taxpayers. Well, I think given the climate that we're in, you know, around budgeting and, and killing the other things, but you'll see as uh, when you read the other sheet, this is part of our CARES funding, um, which okay. is how we're going to be able to provide for it. Uh, okay as well as in that budget has set aside two days of professional development and stipends for teachers. Okay, thank you. 
So when we surveyed the, the parents, uh, will the implementation of Schoology support your child? We had 88% of the responders agree or strongly agree. <clears throat> For the next slide, uh, will the implementation of Schoology support parents and guardians? Again, that was 88% uh, of parents strongly agree or agree. And to conclude, all of the focus groups, all of the uh, conversations that we've had with teachers, parents, community members, uh, these, are the, these are the conclusions that we have. Uh, I'm gonna highlight a few, but we've talked about many of these. Number one is the ability um, to essentially drop everything and switch. So we can be in face-to-face and we can go to distance learning um, the next day. So this program allows us to very rapidly make changes um, in, in this environment, uh, which is a, a huge benefit to us. Uh, consistently, uh, consistent delivery of instruction across the schools. Um, this, this will greatly uh, eliminate some of the, my child has to go here, my child has to go there, where, what different platforms are they in? It all narrows it down to the single platform for not only the child, but also the parent. So we're, everybody's going to the same thing. We're all delivering this content the same way. Everybody's only learning one system. So if I had a child in second grade who does it this way and a child in 10th grade that does it this way, now everything's the same. So you have the child in second grade who learns through the same system as the child in 10th grade. And, and uh, that's, that's a huge advantage for us, um, for, our, for our instruction. And then uh, one of the biggest things that we also want to highlight is, is something that's been brought up also, is the professional learning tools for staff, parents, and students. We think that this, this, uh, this LMS has a tremendous amount of resources for ensuring that all, all stakeholders are adequately trained and, and, and have the proper tools to, to support learning. Um, not only in school, but out of school. In looking at these circular graph things, it seemed like there was a 10 to 12 percent disagree in most every one of them and a very highly positive. If I were doing it, I'd have cross-tabbed all the responses by category. Was there any one category that showed up in disagree that was consistently disagreeing, or is it pretty much uh, a, a cross-section of the participants? What I'm getting at, is there, is there some group that still has objections to this that we need to treat with uh, TLC and extra help? I did notice there are only nine responses on yeah. the last one, and 11% of that is one person. Right. But we're not concerned about the disagrees. Well, I mean... We, we are concerned about the disagrees, and, and we believe that the, mo the majority of the disagrees <laughs> and their comments, we can solve. And so they know, so and it's... they know that. Excuse me? And they know that. That's a question. Yes, the staff do. Mm -hmm. they, they know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually held a follow-up. I want to make sure mm -hmm. that they're in a protected class somewhere that is not able uh, to buy into this because it's a really great tool, uh, <clears throat> that we don't have some kind of special effort to reach out and say, hey, come on aboard. This is really great. Well, I think that was a question they asked earlier. They said they had a wide variety, and you felt you got a good consensus of what the community wanted, not just certain groups. So if that's true, then we should have a, well, we have an a good obligation for certain groups. But no, but I'm not saying is they got a wide variety of people dealing with everything. Mm -hmm. But she said you had a follow up. She just said you had a she had a follow up. You probably didn't. Hear we, we did have a follow up group for staff, staff to address. To yeah, to dig a little deeper and felt like we were able to resolve it. Question and, has to be asked. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Any, any other questions well or comments? Yeah, I mean, well appreciate it. You want to say, uh, yep. <laughs> I, don't I think we know. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> no, was, that, was that the last of the slides? Yeah. yeah that's what uh, I thought. Yeah. Well, I thought you had a recommendation. It, it, well, it, 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 my recommendation it, is learning management system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you've been killing yourself for the last half an hour, <laughs> 45 minutes telling us about it. Fine. Well, thank you. Thanks thank for you. taking your time and coming in. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank Good you to see you. Very well done. Thanks. And just so you know, if you have any. There we are. Gotcha. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you want to see that part? Do you want to take a 10-minute break? Are you okay? Um, maybe take a 10-minute break because um, the next one is um, it budget and it may go. Wow. Okay. We're going to take a 10-minute break, sir. Thank you. For the limited amount of funding that we have, um, $749,000, there is only enough money with all the other things that we're doing to pay for one year of the learning management system. Wait, are you going over the, e the I'm talking about the EES, the, the email we just got today, the education. That's coming up. It sounds like CARES. It, it, it is. Yes. It is. That's where the LMS is in. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. What, what this is in here for is for the following year, we won't have, unless they come up with the CARES again, we'll have to pay some dollars. And I don't know that it's going to be 75, but he put that as a placeholder because that's what we're paying for it right now. As you know, generally, it's not, it's less the following years. It's not always the same amount that you pay initially, but that's why he has that in here. I mean, these are just things to consider that may impact uh, 21 or will impact 22. Okay, so my, okay. Because these things are not budgeted. covering 21, right? It's, it's commitment we're yes. making for Correct. future. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this on is your future. license. Got it. Future. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought it's something. Well, we, we need to go over the CARES Act yeah. stuff and what that covers anyway. So that's down the road. So right now we're just focusing on the budget. Right. No, and but it's on the budget. I, I, I see asking. that as future unknowns. Okay. Right. Future unknowns. Uh, again, barriers and shields, postage and envelopes. You know, if we have to continue with the packets, is, is uh, we had an increase in the number of packets that were sent towards the end of school. Um, because the, the online part wasn't working for some uh, parents, so they requested additional packets. So again, uh, what school looks like this fall will impact these things. Uh, cafeteria, the delivery of meals, additional equipment, um, having to put meals in classrooms. There's a, just a whole bunch of variables. And the food de deficit, you know, we could be experiencing an $80,000 deficit for the meals that are not reimbursed. You know, um, state superintendent said feed everybody, and, and there's certain meals by the regulations that USDA put out that our dinners and our snacks are not reimbursable um, through the process that we currently have that we get reimbursed for our meals. So we may have to cover that at some point. Um, that can't be covered under CARES because... It could be, but there's not enough money in CARES. We only have $749,000. But we asked and, that question yeah. earlier on this food, you know, feeding this. We it, it's Initially, we were told it's also as we paid for by the federal or state, right? So, so there's there's a there's a myriad of options, and one of the things is we could perhaps apply uh, through FEMA and get a um, seventy five percent reimbursement, but we would have twenty five percent. But again, it, it can't be any duplication of already existing federal dollars. That FEMA is like the last straw where we can go to, but that's certainly one of the areas that we would look at so to we done bridge that? this gap. Have we done that? No, we haven't done that yet. Why not? We just haven't had the opportunity to file that particular paperwork. That sounds like something we ought to do, yeah. uh, well, if my board members agree. Well, <clears throat> I'm not in his office having to do all the paperwork, so I'm sure that it'll get done. We'll get there. Soon. Yep. Um, 
And then again, uh, finishing that was finishing the operating budget. As far as the capital budget, this is the exact same presentation that we talked about um, uh, last week or uh, uh, two weeks ago. And um, you can see the systemic projects that are funded by the state were fully funded by the county as well. And then there were some adjustments to the comprehensive building assessment, uh, classroom, uh, I mean, athletics and custodial equipment, the fleet replacements uh, throughout the whole process from what you as a board requested through what the county administrator approved to what the county council finally approved. No furniture replacements for our classrooms and cafeterias. Uh, that's one area we would look to try to use some any additional funds that we could find um, for some of our cafeteria tables because we just don't know what that's going to look like in the fall and, and we have some some old cafeteria tables. So there, we have a safety issue there with some of that. Food service replacement equipment. You know, we don't know how we're going to deliver the meals and on what type of equipment we're going to need, the refrigeration or the heating units. Um, so there's a lot of variables there that are even in the capital budget uh, that still have yet to be ironed out. Um, and again, a lot of these other miscellaneous equipment uh, pro uh, projects have been uh, unfunded. Um, through the county council with the exception of portables uh, for upgrades and repairs. And then security upgrades has stayed the same at 300,000. Our buses, which of course by state law have to be replaced after 12 years, they have to come off the road. The technology plan, uh, that $1.2 million is about $200,000 less than the five-year plan. So we would have to find or, or utilize some leftover capital and or operating dollars next year to make sure that we could fully fund that particular part um, because it does involve Chromebooks. It does involve laptops. Uh, we have contracts with companies uh, as we lease these, this equipment that comes due every year. Um, so there's a shortfall there that we're going to have to fund uh, next year as well. well and we, again, a reduction in textbooks by $200,000. So our total capital budget is $6.7 million. At the end of the year, we'll find out, and I know it's, it's a moving target, some of the ways we have by this save money. We spent some money, but we also say, I mean, we don't have as much electric bills, maybe fuel bills and stuff like that. Can some of that be earmarked, earmarked for like the custodial stuff uh, and replacement things because they're one-time cost? They were saved in that department, and I certainly have a lot of merit in saying and that should be used there. That would be my recommendation that any any savings that we have this year, of course, rolls the fund balance. We see what that number is, what our needs are going to be, because, again, we still don't know what all of our needs are going to be. And at that time in the fall, go to the county commissioners and ask to use our fund balance to purchase these one-time items. Where we, sh where we showed savings in certain yes, places. absolutely. And I just think it, it works real well. You know, if we save money in the classroom, with substitute teachers, that should go back into the classroom. If we save money in somewhere else, it should go to where it goes, the same as, um, you know, maintenance and everything else, because we, you know, what we don't pay now, we're going to have to pay later. Well, that was, uh, and thank you for this. Uh, I sent you a, a list of questions, and one of them was, was there any leftover money in the capital fund balance? Because I'm very concerned about the refrigeration that needs to be replaced in how many schools, Mr. Pender? several schools and $157,000 that didn't get funded by the county commissioners. And if we could ask the commissioners to, you know, move that money to cover that expense, if, if we have it somewhere else available. And that certainly would be the process because the commissioners on the capital budget have line item control, unlike, you know, on the operating right. budget. Um, so yes, any savings are dedicated to those projects and anytime we have savings, we've gone even recently this year, we've gone with some additional funds. We have X number of dollars left in the project. I believe that's what funded the replacement generator at Churchill Elementary right. School this year. So, so yes, that is certainly an avenue that we would um, look to. Um, because I would like to get, if we could possibly get that done before school start, because I mean, these things, we had already had spoilage of food and that's a, I mean, that's kind of a, a priority along with the cafeteria tables too, because that is a safety issue. Yes, ma'am. It's on my list. Thank you so much. Anyone else have any questions or comments on the slide? We could also, I mean, stock up on the, um, what we need for, for cleaning. That's what I mean. If you have a place to store it, we're anticipating a lot of problems with the cleaning supplies. Even getting it. Whatever's not funded with CARES, we could just stock up on it, any leftover monies. Yeah, yeah so we've, we've spent, uh, I think I ran the report today, about $140,000 in what I call COVID related. Uh, things which uh, hot spots are included there and we're going to be able to put that into the cares the cares act but there's a lot of cleaning supplies a lot of the sanitation supplies and things like that that are not of course budgeted in the fy20 budget they're not budgeted in the fy20 
Um, obviously, if we didn't have a school closure, we, we wouldn't have needed those. On the flip side, you know, that's where we were able to fund it because we had the school closure and we had a little bit of savings there. But when it comes to next year, if, if school looks like anywhere like it does, some of those savings that we've experienced this year will not be there next year to pay for the supplies that we may need next year. All the cleaning is going to have to be done when schools are in use. Even more. That's going to well escalate. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lot more. Okay, um, so budget strategy at this point. Um, I, I, I've talked to all the, the board members and we feel that it is, um, it would be good on, benefit on our part to go back to the budget, take some things out, so we can try to save jobs. Okay. Try to save some money um, down the road. I mean, because we're looking at, what is it again now? We're having to come out 1.9? 1 1.9. 1 .9. So for round numbers round discussion, numbers, remember two this two million dollars. For round right. numbers, if we're off by a couple thousand dollars here. Or there we make it balance. Okay, so uh, you had given us two sheets to start off with. So this, this original, are we still? Is this still valid? That is where that is where we are today. Um, I believe I have my copy. <clears throat> that is where we are today, as far as our balancing is concerned. Uh, everything is off that list except for some priorities. And right. Well, the cost of doing business and um, the coordinator of health services, we have to keep. Yes. Um, that one teacher we had to move from the grant mm -hmm. over, we have to keep it there. Okay. Um, and the bus contracts, of course, you know, that's a negotiated increase uh, for the contract language. Correct. Um, and you gave me, uh, did everybody see the supplemental pre K. Kerwin add back. Mr. Vister's um, yeah, so graciously given us a, a, an explanation on. Because I, I, I was like, what is that? Yeah. Thank you. So it, 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 I don't want to use the term a sleight of hand by any means, but we were under some certain direction from MSDE and from. I guess their reporting that they did to the Department of Legislative Services, there was like an aha moment, and Department of Legislative Services came back to MSD and says this, these funds are to expand, not to maintain. Mm -hmm. And for the last couple of years, we've always main, we've gotten the grant and we've maintained that expansion that we did. Um, but the idea is you get money for the expansion, then that becomes funded in the general fund budget, and then you expand with the grant. So because of last year when we got the supplemental, there's two things. One is the pre-K expansion grant, and then you have the supplemental pre-K grant through Kerwin funds, um, because that was money that we had already been spending for pre-K for years, because as you know, that pre-K kids were not included in the standard formula. So when we got those, those dollars, what we were able to do was address some class size issues at elementary schools last year. Well, now that we don't have those dollars to sustain the pre-K expansion grant, those dollars will be used to fund those positions, which means then the elementary positions that we had last year basically become unfunded. And again, to keep staffing where they are, that's why the request is, is an add back to your budget. And we need these three positions. Yes, keep the pre-K, okay. Are we sure about the transportation costs being operation operational costs? So, being that high? so those are just some small placeholders. Again, I know that I know there's a there's in my terms small dollars there, um, but obviously if you add them up, yes, you could have a position or two. But those are just some of the things that we're seeing operational increases. They're half of what they were when we had this budget discussion in January, or as a matter of fact, half of what it was that you approved. Keeping in mind our transportation issues, depending if we go back to full school and you know the transportation of the special ed and the non-publics, these little dollars that are here would just help offset that. Same with the operational dollars. As you mentioned, cleaning supplies are gonna get much more expensive. So yes, we could certainly cut these. Our budget would remain the same, but we all sitting here today know that we're gonna to have to spend more than <coughs> we have in our budget as it is today, uh, anticipated. Oh, that's so that one bus driver is an extra is a new position. Yes, and that's that's anticipating again the increase in non-publics non because we would placement. need a new driver and a new bus to take them to the. Uh, I mean non-public placement, right? Okay. I looked at. <clears throat> 
how far apart we are in balancing something has to give. So, um, Madam Chair, I move to rescind the vote that we made last meeting uh, to enable the virtual academy to continue into the next year's budget. I think that was $135,000. A second, dollars and 158.80. Yeah. So you're making and a motion uh, to rescind, it, Mr. Anderson? You know, it affects uh, so few people. Uh, Sir, we have to have be. a motion and a second before we have discussion. So I have a motion to rescind the Virtual Academy license of 158,080. Do I have a second? Second. Now, Mr. Motion, Mr. Anderson, you can speak to your motion. I was a, a, a proponent of this idea because again, it was another one of these ideas that would stretch into the future. We were the first school system to uh, try this, but like everything else, something has to give. And for so few uh, people and for so high a cost, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't think uh, seeing all these numbers that we can in good conscience allow that to go forward. Any other discussion? Well, I, I agree that to a point, but until we look at the whole budget and find out what we're going to do, it, it's a combination of things. And I'm just saying that if we strike this completely right now, we, we're going to have other meetings on this. Would it be better to sit there and wait until we get a, a whole picture and say, yes, that's definitely something because we'd rather do this, but all of a sudden you cut this and you spend it somewhere else? I don't, I don't know. Well, the, it was passed at the last meeting. I understand. And it's ripe to be dealt with at this meeting. If it according continues to, on, I think it to creates Robert's a rules of problem. Orders. If we're going to consider it, it needs to get done. It can't get done next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday? No. According to Robert's Rules of Orders, this, this was voted on in the last meeting. This Stay is up. the next meeting that we have. In order to rescind this out of the budget at this time, it has to be done at this meeting. You can always put it back. It can always be put back if we find we have savings in other, er, other areas. Mr. Morissette, would you like any comment? This affects students we have in our school system. I mean, they may be homeschooling, but they're still part of our school system. So to me, this affects students. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me to do away with something that's, it might be small, but it's successful and it could grow. Very big cost. Well, Ms. Mr. Anderson, let everyone have a time to talk. Kathy my, Kelly. My only thing is we, I mean, it, it is in the system, but, and they can keep thinking, we're, we're in dire straits right now, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not obviously in favor of firing anybody, um, but so are losing any positions. These are homeschool kids, and what we can do is we could delay it for a year, and if things get better the next year. This is just a really terrible year for um, our budget, and I would like to I don't have a problem with with taking it out right now and just putting in there like and then if our, if we have the ability to to balance the budget then put that back in because we have to make these decisions by July 1st anyhow so I don't have a problem with pulling it out right now because according to Robert's rules this is the only time we can do that otherwise it's been passed and it's done um, but if we could could delay it that decision on permanently doing this definitely doing this then I'd I'd like to do that. It gives us some flexibility right now. I don't want to just say we're going to do it no matter what. So let me let me just clarify. We do have three more proposed budget meetings. So we get to where we need to be tonight with pulling things out. If it looks like it is feasible to put it back in, then it can be done. But at the moment, the motion is on to rescind the vote to have it in the budget for 2021. I'm just... I'm. I'm not saying it shouldn't be pulled out. I'm just, and I'm having a hard time grasping because once we pull it out, I have a very slim chance it's going to go back in because of the other priorities that we we'll want to do first. And I can agree to that. But, you know, there's, there's have to be compromises on a lot of different areas on this. According to Robert's Rules of Order, in order to you know, have I've something rescinded, we have to have a supermajority. So that means four out of the five of us have to say yes. So just make sure that we are all 
aware of that and are where our conscience is and where we are with the budget. Any other discussion? I call for the vote to recant the vote, the vote, the vote on the, rescind. excuse me, rescind the vote on the motion, the vote on, a, hmm, let me get this right. I have to write this down. Rescind the vote to accept the Virtual Learning Academy licensing in the 2021 budget, a proposed operating budget of $158,080. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. no. I, abs I abstain and I know it's going to end up because of supermajority, but I have a tough time doing this right now. Okay, well then it, the, the rescinding does not cut. The Virtual Learning Academy stays in. Okay. Point of order. <clears throat> Does that count as a vote or is it a non-vote? Oh. Because the majority, three to one, is a super majority. That is a good point. Uh, abstain yeah, I think is a non-vote. So three to one is a super majority. You're very, that is very, that's we'll a good point. We'll have to look point. it up. Yeah. Try to find it. Oh, good. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. So look it up. It's, okay. it's now out, right? It is, well, the majority, she has, we have to research that because, sir, I, I. That's not the only expense for the virtual academy. Well, at the moment, let's um, table that so I, until I find out if a supermajority actually exists with someone abstaining. Okay. Okay. Um, going into, did everyone bring their budget book with them? Mm-hmm. Yep. We have the, so also on this front page, the compensation for temporary help and minimum wage increase of $100,000. I had asked you how much we had used at the moment. And again, knowing that we have been closed for a certain amount of time, is it possible to take that number in half? I'd have to, I'd have to look at that. Um, okay. I don't recall you asking me specifically about that I one. I think I asked it two meetings ago what we had been at, at that time. Okay, I will I will look at that. A again, at a, th that particular line would certainly vary with what school is going to look like in the fall. That is true. That is absolutely true. So starting on page two, um, something that has been offered to us, the public information officer which is a position we, we don't have at the moment. Communication specialist. Okay, so the public information officer is not a part of that. I had so, uh, the communication specialist, the public information uh, office uh, person deleted from my uh, my budget. Yeah, because I see it's still on here on the budget. The public information officer was on here for $84,000. I need to ask what document you're, yeah. you mentioned page two. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, the original for budget that was given original to us. Book. Yeah. The first budget book that was ever given to us. A five year one? No. No, mm -hmm. it is a salary plus benefits full-time person. So it's the benefit area that's probably. The only one that I have, sir, was given back to us on October 16th for the FY20 21 request. It's on this sheet of paper. Oh. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, nobody can read it, but oh, it's yellow. Okay. Well, this, so your page two, you're referencing to what we call the line item workbook, which is the five year look back period with what okay. was requested. So I'm sorry, when you said budget book, I'm going back to the official oh. FY20 budget book and, okay. and, and looking at that. So oh, between sorry, the sir. two, we should. 20, requested FY21 budget okay. is what we're looking it's gonna at. It's going to take forever. It probably will, sir. We're here for the long haul. But that, that position is still in there. Yes, yeah, the public information officer is still in here, as far as we know. Because it's a currently funded, filled yes. position. So this document here that you're uh -huh. referencing, I believe, is what was what we called our first blush okay. at, back in October. So we gave you, this was, in, for prior, the members have been on the board a little bit longer, this was that five-year look back where we went back. 
Yes, ma'am. Five. We've got, we've got right here. What, yeah, what this is this, this, this question. And they're really this is the last budget, budget book that we received, yes, sir. Yes, so, from October. Yeah, this yeah. is the last thing that we have received. So this is what we had to work with. But what about this? Which is that what, is that's but different. We got that's that different. It's on the last there too. time I've had that. It's on yeah. there too. It's on there too. Okay. So where would you like us to go to? I mean, we have we have gone through this book, this piece that you gave us. Okay. And we have gone through and, and removed items. So that, that and, and increases. That, and that's fine. Because we want to keep staff. Understood. But the keep in mind that the let's 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 go through it and and see what your first iteration is because when this was first given back in October, this was administration's first blush with some things that we knew needed to happen. Salaries, you know, we weren't anywhere near negotiating salaries, so salaries remained the same. And in some of the areas we did request the increase, but they never, some of the things that you're seeing in here is a requested increase, never made it into your official budget. And that's sort of where in the past years with Captain Kelly, that's where we started working from this document. So as far as adds to the to the FY20 budget, this particular document, the only thing that's added is here. We can certainly cut from there, but some of the requests that you may be seeing here were never Not approved. In there now. Were, were never approved by you. And so some of the requests in here were last year's. I know we had that confusion back in October. Some of them were last year requests. So well, here's the thing, sir. We don't have the right information to be able to go back in this budget to lower the increases that we have we have seen here. This is this is the only document that we have to be working on. I don't want to work on one page, sir. I want to go in here into the bucket list and start cutting things back to help keep people in our system. I understand. So basically, and if you see something in here that we're saying we want to cut back. It's not actually there. We reduced it, then let us know. This well, is all we had to go on to go piece by piece. When we've got this paper that says curriculum and instruction, MOI, something that's MOI or something that's writing and whatever, a piece here, we're trying to get deeper into it so we can say. Completely we, understand, Captain Kelly. That, that's what we're trying because it's but hard. But the I mean, increases, just, if, if you to use Miss Harper's words, we're cutting some increases. The only increases beyond the FY20 budget is shown on this piece of paper. Now, if you if you see a line item and there is no increase and you want to cut that, which I my terminology is cut into the base budget, we can certainly entertain that idea. But some of the increases from this document in October was is is not where we are today. I understand. We just we're just trying to get deeper sure, into it. I understand. That's what I said. If, if you give me your first. Like you mentioned, public information offer. Yes, it's still on the the thing because that's a fully funded in the base budget for FY20 and and that the position. So that's why I was just a little confused as where you were going with public information officer. But we we can take this line by line and and have that discussion over what I know you know that we can do with that particular line. Sure. Let, let me issue one, just so I'm on everybody's on the same page. This April 28th. This is what was done after cuts were made already. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. What? Where is that? I didn't. Even, I don't. Have to. This is eight. This is September. This, this is Dr. Kane's budget that was done in September. You can see stuff has been taken. Well, let me show you pages. Some of the cuts. This is April twenty eighth. Twenty twenty. Okay. This is too general. April. So this, this is, is one that was we done and really stuff was pulled out oh, after so requests were made. So cuts so were made. Explain to me. That's where we came in with our five million. Because I never knew that we had a public information officer. Yes. We do. Yes. Okay. I don't know who that is. Okay. So I, when I saw it on here, I thought that it was no, an this add on. I thought it was an add on. No. Okay. See, these are things that we really would like to know before we have to start going in here to find $2 million to pull out to try and save staff. Understood. It would be very helpful that we had what the budget you are proposing now with all the stuff out of it. How about if we do that? In that. How about if we, how about if we go there? Okay. Give us a new budget with what you have as with all with all everything that's been taken out and reduced from your end. So instead of us working on an antiquated document. Okay. I can. Is do that, that fair? Sure. 
Sure. Because I, I am proposing that we have three more meetings next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We have to make a, a vote on that, so that we can have so we can make intelligent decisions about what we're doing with the system. Okay. I can't work off one paper anymore. I, I can't do it. I I need to see tangible numbers. So so I, I understand the fact that the one paper thought it worked well last year, but that would be in, in good times. Your base budget is what you have this year. We ask for this much and we've had to cut that back. And where we are with that, that's this. this these half a dozen items on here are the only new requests going forward. But you still have increases in, you have two to three percent increases in some dollar amounts in some places. Yes, but that's okay. been the transition from our October sessions into superintendent's presentation to what was presented to you, the work okay. sessions and all of that. And we'll learn going forward. This was more of a historical document in October. So you could see over the, the five year trend what we've okay. spent in those particular areas, which you probably based some of your decisions on. I, d I based all of my decisions on. And that's, and, and that's I... accurate. The only change between what you have done and what we have here is the request, the approved column in your what I call the five year budget. That approved column, the only difference that's added to those numbers there is the half a dozen things on here. Okay. But, I, but I will take this particular document and modify it so that the, what we have on here as requested matches this particular thing. So you're only going to see, with the exception of salaries, you're only going to see these few changes now between those two columns of approved and requested. Well, and I can certainly you, do that for you. Well, those changes though, you're gonna divvy them out in these different categories. Yes, well, and, and, they're, and again, they are pretty much here. So well, I'll use transportation really. as an example. Well, because did, when I asked you about meetings and conferences, mm -hmm. all the meetings going forward are gonna be done on Zoom. I mean, let's be honest, there's not gonna be any out of county, out of state conferences or meetings. Everything's gonna be done by Zoom. So we were trying to save, what was it? $40,000 across the board in meetings increased out money. The, out of the base budget. Out of the base pull, budget. Pulling out of the base budget. Certainly. $40,000, that's somebody's salary. So we're, we as collectively as board members, we're trying to do what we thought working with a document that we had before us. And I would have to say, based on the conversation, we have 90% of probably what you've done is, is most accurate. There's just a few requested increases that administration first blush back in October okay. thought of these requested increases, which is why they would be in that a dollar amount in that right column. So is it okay that we get a new book so we sure. can see what actually is in there now? And um, so we could, make better decisions on this? Absolutely. I'll okay. be happy to update I, that. I, but I think the bottom line is we were digging into base budget. Yes. Not necessarily just the increase. We weren't big digging into increase at all. We were going back into Strictly the base, base budget. budget. Absolutely. And the document you have was most certainly appropriate to do that. My, my only concern when you first said the increases that were shown on this document were proposed increases back in October and we've talked to them for months. Okay. That's the only difference. If you see something, a, okay. a, a column to the far right that has no dollar amount, that means we didn't request for an increase, we didn't request for a decrease. If you as the board want to come back and decrease that, you've already done that work. Well, actually, no, we haven't seen all of the, what you've taken out. I mean, as far as, as far as, we, we just haven't seen a clean document. Okay, I will get Is you a clean fair? document. Is that yes. a fair assumption? Yep, okay. I will get you okay. a clean document. Just okay. so I get a little bit of understanding. I've got something dated here. April the 28th, 2020. Yes. And I'm just going back to the last page, which is not, this is just a big overall assumption. We were at 5.6 million at that point, taking what we, what we needed for new money. Mm -hmm. We've got 2.3. Now you're telling us we need, we've cut some more. We're 4.3. And then I, you know, we've got things like the workforce coordinator come, has come out of it and stuff like that. This April the 28th, 2020 was the last detailed revised budget we received from Dr. King and her staff. Yes, that's your, that, yes. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at. Okay. So and you're has, looking at. Has things changed since then? Has any, any of the numbers changed since then? Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Possibly. Because I, I, I care for one thing, Possibly. the workforce coordinator has been pulled out. That's 100,000. Yeah. Okay. So it's come so down. Get... That's where that 5.6 come down to, you say we need 2 million more, which is 4.3 or 4. So you've already pulled another million three out of it, looks like to me. Not that we can't pull more. Right. And, and, you, and the big gorilla in this whole world is, is, is employee compensation benefits. Mm -hmm. That's the big gorilla. Okay. You know, I mean, that's 86%. I will get you a cleaner document. Thank you. Then that would be that would be very helpful. To apologize for any confusion and and I was working on the only document that I had available to me. So, um, okay. I I suggest that we do have subsequent okay. meetings. Now, I apologize that they'll have to be at night, okay. Mr. Smith. Sorry. <laughs> You're messing about. I'll get the I board whatever it needs. Okay. Well, until we get a clean document, then this is superfluous. So. Um, I will get you one. Uh, let's move on to current action items then so we can clean this up. Uh, we actually need to make a motion to add an action item 4.03, the CARES grant increased uh, appropriations. Do I have a motion to make to add it to the, to the agenda? It's here. So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Sorry. It's not on the agenda. It's not on here. CARES grant? It is not on the paper agenda in front of you, sir. So I'm asking to add it to 4.03. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? The only thing is it's it's all my board docs though, right? Correct. Okay, yes, I just, just want to make sure that we're on gotcha, the same Gotcha, okay, page. you just want to change the paper, gotcha. Yes, I make a motion to add 4.03, the CARES, gr CARES grant increase in appropriations. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, uh, opposed say no, the ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you so much. So now the contracts for approval 4.01. If you want to just go ahead, I mean. Yeah, I mean, we've had from Salon as well. From the okay. Can, can we can we take them out of order? Yeah, make a yeah, that's that fine. That's so, absolutely fine. Um, are they all required by some law or well, statute or Comar? All, all of these, the contract. All of these. So it's just a question of whether the contractor is appropriate, and do we know anything about them? And so you're waiting for Miss Smith to come to do the few that she has. Actually, the first uh, three. Yep. Correct. Some of them do have to Do we need date. to wait for Josh to come down for the other one? No, I, I, I can take care of those. Start at the bottom and go up. I'm sorry? Start at the bottom and work your way up. Okay. And are all of the contract amounts in the 2021 budget? Well, that's what we get to, sir. When I, I make the motion, then we do the discussion. We find out what exactly, where it, where it all is and if it's in the in the budget. So do I have a motion to accept for purchase approval Microsoft licensing fiscal impact dollar amount $57,375.84 this budget source of FY 2021 technology licensing operating budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. Second. Second for discussion. I have a question. Yeah. Questions, comments, discussion. Mr. Kaluski. <clears throat> Uh, Madam President, the superintendent requests the purchase of uh, our Microsoft licensing. This is our annual licensing um, purchasing agreement. We do this every year. Uh, we're a whole host of Microsoft suites, including um, our servers as well, um, and our IT hardware. This is part of the Madam FY20. President. This is actually operating licenses out of technology. What is the that presentation we have of any impact if this is renewed, not renewed, or whatever, it actually, it ha it's entirely different. It, this is actually our base of, of all of our hardware that we use the Microsoft suite to all of our devices. So the connection between the learning management system, um, you could use a Word document as an example within the learning management system, uh, but the, this is for the Microsoft suite that all of our devices have on it. 
at what's the change in the rate from last year? Is it just flat for five years until the license is paid for? Mr. Fister, do you know? I don't know. Generally, NAIC has a 2 to 3 percent, depending on the product within there. Automatic escalator every year. Every school system in Maryland buys this software um, through the Maryland Educational Consortium. So we so added the automatic 2 to 3 percent escalator for all these software products. We added the 2 to 3 percent on last year's cost, and it's in the current budget. Yes. And as all right. And it's yes. the same with all of these in one way or the other. Uh, not all. Not I think we just need to take them no. one at a time. Yep. One right. at a time. Yes. What, what, year, what year is this of a, what's this, like a three-year contract in second, third year or something? I'd have to defer to Mr. Combs on that. But it's not a what? It, it is a, so it is a three-year contract. It says it on here. Okay. It's with Bell Te Tech Logics. Um, 2020, year three contract. Okay. And it has all the servers, the core server platforms. Correct. Core operating. Core operators. So we need this for our system to operate. Yes, ma'am. And it falls within the budget, Mr. Fister, or yes, what so we're trying licensing. to yes, work on. Okay. Any other discussion, questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote. On the motion for the purchase approval of the Microsoft licensing with, and let me say this name again, Bell Technologics. Fiscal dollar amount $57,375,000.84 from the FY 2021 technology licensing operating budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you, Madam President. Do you want to let Jolene come up? Ms. Smith come up? Sure. Good evening. Good evening. Ms. Smith, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm, I apologize. I'm not used to all the distancing yet, so okay. I, I didn't know if I should come up or not. Fine. Uh, contract <coughs> for approval with Solient Health School Psychologists. Uh, for psychology student school psychology services contract period august 1st 2020 to july 31st 2021 fiscal impact dollar amount of one hundred fifteen thousand five hundred ten dollars and fifty cents budgeted by the fy 21 unrestricted operating budget do i have a motion so moved second, second. i have second. a motion second questions comments discussion Ms. smith thank you so much You're welcome i think i have two more as well yes well we do one at a time okay so, this, no, yep. just, so you want to just say a brief word about what this about. is about, what this contract is for? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so for, uh, for the school psychologist contract, um, so this is for school psychology services for our students um, that are, um, it's for our special ed students just as much as our general education students. They're providing social emotional support um, and learning opportunities for our students that we really feel that we're going to anticipate needing this upcoming school year. Um, in addition to that, they provide assessment opportunities for our students with disabilities so that they can meet eligibility requirements to receive services. Um, and then they're also providing counseling for some of our students as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fister, it says unrestricted operating budget. What is, can you explain that? That is, that is just the ongoing uh, contracted services line and within the special ed budget, uh, the base budget that we've been discussing tonight is funded through that. Okay, thank you. It's not grant funded, it would, it would come out of the operating budget. Any other is questions? Is this the same person that was here for a while or is this a new person or we get whoever happens to be available? This particular person is the same person that we had um, last year and the year before. Um, so for continuity of services, that's a positive thing. Um, you know, eventually we hope to absorb her as an employee perhaps someday, but uh, we're not there just yet. So to clarify, this is a contract a service, okay. Not a, not a, not a okay. FTE. Is there some minimum educational requirement in order to perform this job? Yes. So all school psychologists have to, uh, they have to be bachelor's prepared and master's prepared. They have to do a one year 
practicum placement. All right. Okay, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion for the contract approval with Soliant Health. Am I saying that right? Soliant. Soliant, yes. thank you. Health School Psychologist, contract period August 1st, 2020 to July 31st, 2021. It's fiscal dollar amount of $115,510.50. Budgeted from the FY, unrest FY21 unrestricted operating budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Do I have a motion for the contract approval, Soliant Health Speech Papalix? Oh, thank you. For speech and therapy, speech and language services, fiscal impact of $101,808 from the FY21 unrestricting operating budget. Do I have a motion? Second. 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 Questions, comments, discussion, Ms. Smith. Why is the speech pathologist so much more expensive than the psychologist? Actually, Just it's not. Cheaper cheaper it's cheaper yes uh, by by a hundred fourteen hundred fourteen thousand dollars okay and we do need speech pathologists we do and um, this one person goes to all 14 of, of our schools this particular speech pathologist is actually at one school um she we have at our both of our k to two or pre-k to two schools we have a very high need for speech pathologists um our caseloads there are around 67 students for one speech pathologist and that and it supersedes that um so this particular uh, speech pathologist providing both um, instruction for expressive, receptive, and pragmatic skills. Um, she is carrying a very full caseload, um, and we we are just having you know we're we're really trying to secure employees in this area, um, but it's it's a critical shortage area as well. And has this person been with us a while? Again, this particular right. one has been with Good. us. Any other questions, comments, discussion? I call for the vote on the motion for the contract ap approval with Soliant Health Services Speech Pathologist. Fiscal impact $101,808 $101, from the FY21 unrestricted operating budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Do I have a motion to accept the contract approval for Watts Consulting for Occupational Therapy Services, contract period July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $82,536 from the FY21 unrestricted and restricted operating budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. Second. Questions, comments, discussion? Ms. Smith, thank yes. you. So uh, Watts Consulting is providing occupational therapy services for our infant and toddler population. Um, this again is an area that typically we, um, we get through the consortium. However, we have so many students that it exceeds our allotment. Uh, so we have to outsource with contractual services in this area. Just like our psychologists and our speech pathologists. So we brought a daycare center. Is this what this is? So for our infants and toddlers, um, special education covers birth all the way up to age 21. Uh, so students or children that are identified from birth all the way up to age three um, can receive special education services. And th those are the ones that fall under that infant and toddler um, umbrella. Can go beyond that, but that gets a little more complex after that. Any other questions, comments? It's just irrelevant. Is, why do we use 22.65 hours a week? It, and it's, it's just probably irrelevant. Yeah. Just tell me you don't need to answer that. You, I'm fine with that. <laughs> well, I, the, the short answer is it's just kind of the breakdown of how many hours per week that she requires in order to meet all the needs of our students. I just mean 20, 22, 23, 24, but point It would six. be easier, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're in details. She put it in there just so you would find it. Uh, listen, <laughs> everybody gets to ask a question now and then. I wanted to be very precise. Uh, you got it. <laughs> okay. Good answer. <laughs> Hearing none, I call for the uh, vote on the motion for the contract approval Watts Consulting for Occupational 
uh, therapy services, contract period July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021, fiscal dollar amount of $82,536 for the FY21 unrestricted and restricted operating budget. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, have a good summer. Do I have a motion for purchase approval for the Palo Alto firewall from Skyline Technology Solutions? Uh, fiscal impact amount of $108,803 from the FY 2021 technology capital budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Thank you. A motion, second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Paluski. Um, Did I say that right? Palo, Palo Alto? Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. uh, California. Madam, Madam President, the superintendent recommends a purchase approval of Palo Alto Firewall. Uh, this is also part of our uh, technology plan. It's to replace our current firewall. Uh, it is also to increase internet speed. It is also to uh, increase or rather upgrade our next generation uh, security. Uh, and is also part of one of the findings, the audit findings from the legislative audit. Um, the purchase would be out of the FY21 technology capital budget. Any questions, comments? What was the finding? I forget, I read it, it's been three years. I uh, believe it was on increased security within, uh, added security within the firewall. And but I believe the- missing? I believe the audit um, finding was that it needed to be upgraded. I could certainly look that up for you. Mr. Anderson, I don't- I don't vote against this, but I, uh, just curious uh, what was missing. Uh, not that I want it public uh, until we get it filled, but I, I would be happy to provide that to okay. you. I don't, yeah. I don't have that necessarily that specific audit finding sitting in front of me, but it is part of legislative audit. I'd be happy to provide you with that okay. specifics. Do all our schools have roughly the same internet speed? I know it could vary, but roughly the same. Or... Generally speaking, yes. Even the even the ones up county then that have the more. So hearing none, other discussion or questions? Uh, per the, I call for the vote on the motion for the purchase approval for the Palo Alto firewall from Skyline Technology Solutions. Fiscal dollar amount of $108,803 from the FY 2021 technology capital budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I need a motion for the purchase approval of the third and fourth grade Chromebooks. Fiscal dollar amount of $522,200 on the FY 2021 technology capital budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. 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 Questions, comments, discussion, Mr. Paluski. Uh, Madam President, the superintendent, superintendent recommends the purchase of third and fourth grade uh, Chromebooks. This is part of our five-year technology plan. Um, they are currently at the end of their life around four years old. Um, there's no longer a warranty um, for uh, these items. Um, so the need to be able to replace them. So this would be a purchase of 1,400 um, third and fourth grade Chromebooks. Um, the, uh, the old ones that we will use will be to uh, for parts as well as loaners. Uh, but the more important part is, um, as you can imagine around the country, everybody's trying to buy devices. So um, the timeline here is pretty tight in order to purchase these, in order to have them by September. Uh, or possibly even late October. Um, so the request uh, would be to purchase those with the FY21 technology budget, capital budget, excuse so me. How much would you expect to get from the ones that are currently in the hands of third and fourth graders? As far as those, well, we'll use those for- They still work, probably most of them. Sure, and, and in speaking with Mr. Combs, what we'll do is we can increase the number of loaners at each individual school uh, as an example, we use those for parts. Um, 
I mean, but right now that's do we have a, a somebody that takes them apart and puts parts together? We do. We have uh, we have technicians. That's all they. Uh, we have technicians. That's all they do is work on uh, laptops and Chromebooks. I hope that's not um, all they do, but uh, maybe you'd you'd, you'd be surprised with kids about holding on to these things. I would suspect they are pretty. pretty well, I, I, what we're finding is with this next level of purchasing, we're we're purchasing a better product, and that product is more durable. So we have seen that with our purchase in middle school. Oh, particularly with third and fourth graders. I mean, they, they might not be home? as careful. Yes, third and, fourth, uh, third and fourth grade. First and second that leave them. Well, so traditionally, we would only allow fifth graders to take those Chromebooks home five to 12, uh, but they have been now, uh, during the pandemic, um, we redeployed those um, out to the students. Because they used to be in those. Correct, they used charges. to be at home, I mean, in school, on chargers, correct. Correct, Captain Kelly. Matter of fact, it was one of the first things when we met with principals that they, they were eager to get in their building so they could yeah. get those devices out to their families. And, and kudos to them, they did that very, very quickly within about two or three days. So I apologize, uh, I, I did not say that it is with Dayo Networks is with the contract. It says here that QACPS is working on replacing 1400 Chromebooks from classroom carts in grades three and four. This purchase is aligned with the Queen Anne's County Technology Capital five-year plan. Uh, pricing and quotes were provided by data networks for these units at $373 a, a piece, at, hence the $522,000. So this my apologies for not including that in This the, is in our capital budget. That's my next question. Mr. Fister, is this in the capital budget that was approved by the county commissioners? Yes. And so what about the 200000 that we did not get in the technology? Where would we be finding that? We would have to look for that as any leftover money capital project as we discussed earlier today to make a transfer balance rollover that we would have from this fiscal year we could certainly ask to have that transferred to the capital budget as well okay long as a capital if project we, if we don't get the two hundred thousand if we don't have something we can backfill it with what is it we would not be buying i'd have to ask mr combs on that um yeah that would be good to know because you know, i'm not excited about more fund balance going in. so are these current Chromebooks here, well, that's that's why I'm wondering if we shouldn't talk to him first to see what he would need. Uh, well, we could this, table this, this. Yeah, no, I, my recommendation would be not to not, not to delay this because of the timeline to get them back, to get them here in time for school. Um, we can certainly get you uh, the $200,000 that was striked out of capital budget. Um, Where and, it would come proud of. Right. There are some smaller items um, that, you know, are 40000 50000 I'm pulling the plan up now, but it okay. wouldn't impact that. Okay. Correct. And 1400 gives every third and fourth grade student in our whole system a new computer. 14 is the number we need. Yes. Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear me? Mm -hmm. Call me tomorrow. I will. Sir. Okay, hearing no other discussion, I call for the vote for the purchase approval for the third and fourth grade Chromebooks for the purchase of 1,400 Chromebooks through data networks for the fiscal impact dollar amount of $522,200 for the FY 2021 technology capital budget. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Do I have a motion to accept the learning management system purchase for contract period July 1st through June 30th, 2021, fiscal dollar amount of $55,975.35 from the CARES grant fund? Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, how, how discussion. Does... I apologize again. This is through a Schoolology by PowerSchool. I apologize for not including that in, in the motion. So this is the uh, this is what we were asking, Mr. Man Anderson. This is what um, Ms. Forbes and uh, Mr. Page were sitting here discussing with us. This learning management system that was why they gave the presentation. Expense. Oh. So do we have? Here's a question, Mr. Fister. Do we have a a list of all the things that are going to be purchased by the CARES Act? It was provided to you in the application, I believe, Dr. Kane sent. Is that big thing you just got? came on the email to But I got this afternoon. I haven't had a chance to look at it. It's on. Okay. It was just submitted uh, 
to an MSD on Friday. Okay. So this includes all the things that will be purchased by the CARES Act funds. You're going to go over that, right? I mean, it's in the agenda for today. That's for an appropriation, but we certainly can go over that. It would be great. Okay, but. Uh, but you said this is 40, the ongoing fees for this are 44,000. I thought. Your it's it's a it's more than a one-year contract. I think it's under this CARES Act this year. I think what they explained earlier was next year is something we're going to have to fund, possibly ourselves if CARES is not re-upped. For forty-four thousand. The second. It wasn't seventy-five. You said seventy-five. Was that buying something? Seventy-five, I believe, is the the, the number that we originally put uh, in the CARES Act Budget. application for this product in any ancillary things that might need to go along with it. So this contract term here says for 36 months. Correct. End date of 2023. Correct. And the, um, with the professional development piece included, the initial term of 55,975. <coughs> Ongoing fees of 44,750.70, which is something we would have to find in the 2022 budget. And I do believe, Ms. Harper, that there are uh, some smaller licenses within the Division of Curriculum Instruction that we would discontinue as a result. That of, was my next question, is where we would... There's would, a like, <coughs> curriculum is, loft. Is there some I'll things use, that we would be... I'll use that as an example. We use curriculum loft. There's a license that's it's basically a filing system. Um, we can do away with that. It would be obsolete with would, having this system. Because we would be now convert, convert... We wouldn't be using that. Okay. So that... that Oh, you wouldn't need that one anymore. Correct. Okay. And, and see, that, that's the unique thing of this is now we're going with one platform that will be able to integrate. So as, and I, my staff and I have been looking at that of what are we no longer using? What is, you know, that is essentially outdated that we'll be able to, um, you know, as long as our teachers have, um, you know, the resources and the curriculum, which they will, um, and are easily to be able to integrate over from Google Word files. Um, it so just in case anyone else is wondering, this is a sole source, so it didn't have to be bid out? It is a sole source uh, for, for two major reasons. One, because of its, it's a closed system, as Ms. Forbes was talking about. Right. So the data privacy, the communication, all of that is, is protected. Uh, the second piece, which makes it sole source, is the integration ability. So our grade book, our assessment system, all of those are provided by PowerSchool as well. Um, so the integration, not to get technical, but it's called an API key, which actually allows these systems to be able to integrate and talk to one another. Uh, when you don't have that ability, you've got to actually pay somebody outside another fee to convert their product to be able to talk to this. So there's a huge added, uh, added benefit and also due to the fact that, you know, as superintendent mentioned, as we go into this, this coming school year, uh, we need to be able to have the ability to, at a moment's notice, be face to face to virtual, uh, literally within minutes. This will allow us that opportunity to do it. And the, the back end accountability, which was desperately needed. Okay. So then in addition to this will be a, um Next year's budget has to include another 44000 for this to keep that going. And I anticipate it would be a little bit less. I think once we save some of that licensing from some other things, we're going to try to get that down there a little bit. I mean, be able to save that from internally. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, discussion? A call for the vote uh, to uh, the purchase of the learning management system by school, Schoolology by PowerSchool, contract period July 1st through June 30th, 2023, uh, fiscal, do well, excuse me, just 2021, fiscal do dollar impact of $55,975.35, budget source, the CARES grants funds, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it, the motion is carried. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Does that take care of all those? Okay. Transfer request, Mr. Fister? 
the CARES. CARES grant, thank you. Want me to go first? Well, I had put it at 4.03, but you know what? Let's just. Tell me which one you want, transfer request or appropriation request? Appropriation request, go ahead. Okay. Thank so you, the sir. appropriation request before you is um, requesting approval from the commissioners because of the CARES grant and the amount of the CARES grant, $739,000, um, we have to ask for appropriation authority before we can spend a, do a dollar of that because it would exceed our total appropriation authority for the year. Uh, if you recall, we did this, something similar to this last year with the Striving Readers Grant because they combined two years into one. We had to go ask uh, for additional appropriation authority as required by um, Section 5105. So again, it, it's rated because we got a grant. Uh, the grant amount was 739000 We We build in a little bit because of extra grants that we may not get in, in the restricted fund. It doesn't affect the operating budget, the general fund budget at all. Um, we just don't have enough in our restricted budget that if we accepted this grant that we would overspend basically our restricted budget. So it's appropriation authority only. There's no impact on county revenue or state revenue or anything like that. It's just our ability to spend the dollars that the federal grant, uh, federal government has given us. Could you give me an example of the type of money is in the restricted Right here, we just spent money that we didn't have the authority to spend. Uh, your title grants from the federal government, um, our Striving Readers Grant as an example. So all of our restricted funds are basically the grant funds that we get to supplement our operating so budget. It just as a suggestion, when something like that we have to vote on, we all should have a copy of what the chairman has. Well, I just got it too, so we're all in the same well, boat. Uh, we, we're here too. That's okay. We're here. Well, we're I mean, we got a copy of it by email, didn't we? I mean, yeah. I've got it in front of me. If she just got it, how well, did I mean, I got it, I got I it when everybody else did. So it's okay. Send it to me. It's all good. That's I not your fault. Would you, we need a vote for, for this? Okay. Yes. We need to have a, a motion. Yes. Okay, action item on this. Okay. So do I have a motion to send, so just again to qualify what this is? Just to increase in appropriation authority on the restricted grant in the amount of $739,946 for the CARES grant. Okay, so do I have a motion to send the letter over to the county commissioners requesting to have the additional appropriation authority for $739,946,000 in federal restricted grants? Do I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Questions or comments on the motion? Can I add this stuff up and it's nickel stuff. You say 739, I only come up with 721. That's the total in this thing. I'm, lo I'm looking at, uh, hold on, let me tell you what I'm doing so we're all on the same page. Where are you looking at? It's a letter. May the it was dated May the 1st, 2020. It was mm -hmm. There's a budget form in there. Yeah. It's like 96,000 for mobile hotspots, 13,000 for outdoor Wi Fi kits. 100,000 for what we just, oh no, 100,000 for targeted learning recovery. Learning management systems, we just approved. You budgeted 75,000. Mm -hmm. The question I have, two questions, and it's like I said, we, you say 739 only adds, adds up to 721, but um, 313,000 for professional development step it's for implementation of LMS, including fixed charges. Just a little. You're going to go over this list. Let's go over the. Sure. This list Certainly we can. just got today. Certainly can. And that's what he's talking about. That total 730. Um, yeah. So the plan that was submitted by Dr. Kane mm -hmm. to spend the $739,000. Right. Um, mobile hotspots that we've already purchased to finish the distance learning for the rest of the year. Oh, has everyone got this? It's the copy of this thing we just got. You said you had a copy. I'm looking at it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying to find the page where it has all the. So um, I'm. Go it's attachment this. B, page five. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Attachment B, 2020, um, budget narrative, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Thirty-nine thousand five hundred dollars is the uh, four hundred um, mobile hotspots that we purchased already. In operation of plant, uh, which is where communications is budgeted, the data plan for those 400 mobile hotspots at $40 a month is $96,000. So again, as we discussed earlier, there's only um, 
enough money in this plan uh, going into next year uh, CARES funds unless something else were to happen or we get additional funds to fund those data plans for six months. Well, the, Edmont the Edmonton, which I can't ever say, we did that last, the last meeting. Yes. The 100,000. The 100,000. Um, in, be in between. So you're saying at next year or the, the remainder of this year, we're going to need another 96,000. This is, this is how we plan on spending our funds. And that so we already spent or working on which it Which of these have we already spent? You said we've already well, purchased the devices. Uh -huh. We have already, and we of course purchased the data yeah. since we went live with those devices. And I don't know the exact date that we went live, but basically it's $40 per month per device. What we are proposed to pay out of the CARES grant was six months of that service. So now, 96, 96, so now with this learning management system, we're only talking about 55,000, not the 75,000. So we're done with the mobile hotspots six months from now? Yes. No, 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 not necessarily done. We're out of money to be able to pay for it from the CARES grant. Right. So, I mean, we don't have that in the budget for the right. FY21. So we're not going to go away. Why Why right. so, the, so the data, if, if we cannot find additional funds, then we would no longer pay for the data. Yeah. If we used, if we stopped it after three months, because this was actually created for COVID, uh, if we're back to normal, why would we pay for these hotspots beyond that? Well, because because we, don't, we wouldn't get any, we, we wouldn't be able to use the money for anything else. No. We correct? don't know that we'll be back to normal. And part of the reason why we're making these preparations is so that we can have a seamless transition, right? So we don't know that all of our kids are going to be able to come back to school. Um, and certainly we don't know if all of them are going to be able to come back to school at the same time. So they need to have some way to access their lessons at home. Yeah. And while they're in school, they can do their school lessons. While they're at home, they can do their learning at home. We need all these hotspots? We do. We, we don't even know who these kids are yet. We do. Yeah, oh, they're our students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they've, they've identified. They've already them. been disseminated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And teachers have some of these. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, um, so here's my question. This $19,000 that we have difference here because the learning management system only costs us 55. What are we going to do with that 19 left over? Are we going to use it towards cleaning supplies? I mean, because we are we, just discussed it. So, so again, keep in mind that this, this, <laughs> this plan extends through September 30th of 22. So as we get this plan, this plan hasn't even been approved by MSDE yet. So once that approval comes through, and as, again, this is a budget, so as the costs came in and we reformulate that, we would certainly have the ability, as with any other grant, to redirect these funds, these unspent funds. It could extend hotspots for one more year. It all depends on what the urgent need is at that particular time. Okay, that answers my question. We're not going to lose the grant because no. we haven't requested everything on this piece of paper. Whatever's left over, we still have our ability to use it somewhere else. Yeah, this is a plan that MSD has, needs okay. to approve. And once they do that, just like any other grant, if the grant focus changes, as this could, um, we, we certainly have the ability to do a grant amendment and use those funds in some other direction, uh, as long as it supports one of the, um, I forgot the, the code, uh, section 18003D of Division B of the CARES Act, as long as it fits that, and they're pretty broad terms, uh, we will not lose this money unless we don't spend it. And, and as Ms. Harper asked, the 75000 since the we only spent 57 or whatever number we spent, that money is still left in our fund, like we would a, a capital project with run, whether we come under budget, we could use it for something else. Absolutely. Gotcha. This is kind of one of the things, this is dated May 1st, one of the things that the board should have approved. This is a huge budget issue. So, I mean, I, I don't have any problem with the way it's being spent, but this is something that we are responsible for. This is the, the, May the, right, the May 1st date is the date that they probably created the document or the application, the application. but this was just submitted to MSDE on Friday. Okay. So you're, you're not missing anything, and we knew we were meeting today, and that's why you have it now. Okay, so we're, we're granting approval of this, is that what you're saying? Correct. That's what the board is doing. You, you, you're, you're not necessarily granting approval of that. You're granting approval for us to increase our appropriation authority so that we can spend the dollars once they get to us. Right, so we but should the, be approving I, but the, this. Well, the, you don't well need that's to just it. That. Things that are on here, we approve. Okay. 
So we, each of these items we have already done, we do action items on these pieces. Like we have not seen the professional development stipend for the LMS fixed charges of 313,000. We haven't seen that yet. Right. We haven't seen. We haven't that's, that. that's teacher stipends. You wouldn't approve it. right teacher so stipends. You're misunderstanding. You don't need to approve that document. Okay. That is an operation no. of the district. If there is a contract attached to it that we, we need do. your approval, Thank that's you. what you approve, and you just did that. Okay. What we're asking for, Mr. Fister, so I can is here spend the dollars. He needs you to approve the appropriation so that we can spend those grant dollars because it's over what we had already gotten approval for because this grant just came available right. during the um, COVID-19 pandemic. Right. We, had to, so send, we had to send this letter over to the county commissioners in order to expand the... I know that. Uh, okay, well, that's. I'm just that's, explaining mm -hmm. that for the appropriation authority, for him to be able to spend these dollars, this letter has to be sent to the county commissioners for us to get us to be able to spend this. Right. Okay. Yes. That's, that's that, what this that is, is about. Correct. The 103, if you wrap this all up, the $103 million budget that we operate under today, I can't spend $103, $103 million in one dollar unless I have the appropriation, appropriation. authority to do that. If, if, even though it's so, not costing us anything, I need the authority granted by you and the commissioners to spend those dollars if it's above the, the total amount of our unrestricted and restricted grants above that 103. Okay. So we are out of the scope of what the motion is and we need to finish the motion. Well, okay. Because I, I, I think uh, one, this is one piece of authority. Because okay. until this I does the, authority does the letter okay. ask them to do something and are we sure they will do it? The letter that you're asking to be approved? Yeah. Yes. What well, I, one, I would think the commissioners would want us to make available a federal dollars of 739000 and the yes, letter that letter say exactly says that. The following action is needed so that this federal money can be used for our students. So something it's, like that needs it, to be in the letter. But it is. It, 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 it is. is. Good. You, well, I, I, it nobody is read the letter to me, so okay. I Okay. My current so let me. Is this is $739, and we just now saw it. Okay. This is a proposal, though. This is like the wish list in a grant. This doesn't mean you're going to get this dollar amount. They may say, no, you're going to get half of that. Then you're going to go back through your proposal and see what you want to spend it on. And we're going to be able to do that, the board. I think for sure if we we're don't send have the letter, to. we don't Thank get you. any of but it. This isn't guaranteed money. Okay, I misunderstood. For, this is like a wish list oh, wait, to spend know. that money. John, just for interest, we're getting proposed grant for this for $738,000. The county's what, getting $4 million a day here or something like that? A uh, total of 8.8. .8. They're, they're getting access a total to of 8.8 8 million. They have access to half. For this, for the covert. Yeah. We're get, but that, that 739 is what we get, not of that 8 million. They're getting Correct. theirs. Correct, no. totally separate, separate money. Which is why we're on our own with like medical supplies and sanitation supplies right. and masks and things like that. And you can see they're not in this request the, the 739 the lowest, is the second lowest dollar amount in the state, in the state of, maryland. of maryland yes sir so in answer doesn't to go your, far and to answer to your question mr anderson the letter mr anderson the letter sent to mr moran the president over there in accordance with section 5 dash 105 in the annotated code of maryland the board of education requests county commissioner approval of an additional appropriation request of seven hundred thirty nine thousand four hundred six dollars seven hundred thirty nine thousand nine hundred forty six thousand dollars in restricted grant funding for the period of June 30th, 2020. QACPS is the recipient of the Federal Education Stabilization Fund Program, Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief, ESSR, ESSER fund grant. These funds were allocated as a part of the Federal CARES Act related to COVID-19. The grant period is retroactive March 13th, 2020 to September 30th, 2022. The purpose of this grant is to support local educational agencies, LEAs, the emergency relief funds to address the impact COVID-19 has had and continues to have on elementary and secondary schools. LEAs must provide equitable services to students and teachers in non-public schools as required under the CARES Act. LEAs can only use these funds allowable under the section 18003D 18 of Division B of the CARES Act as part of this provision, provision. LEAs are expected to the greatest extent practical continue to compensate its employees and contractors during the period of any disruptions or closures related to COVID-19. This request for the additional appropriation authority of $739,946 in federal restricted grants for the period of June 30th, 2020 will increase the FY 2020 restricted budget to 8,000, excuse me, that is 8 million. 8 million. Thank you. 
116411. There you go. Thank you for your consideration approving this request. That is the letter that is being sent it over to the county. tell them to, to send a request and approval to anybody or even back to us. <coughs> we don't have a record that they approved it unless it's on the county, uh, unless they bring it up in a meeting. They will. They, will. they have it'll, to. It'll, it'll be on their agenda. It'll, it will be on their agenda okay. at their next meeting, right. and then they can give Good. the authority to to this mm -hmm. board, to Mr. Fister. Okay. Okay. So that is the letters being sent over. This is why we're doing this. Now we're seeing what we would like to spend the money on. Should we get these dollars? Okay. I mean, we've already spent 55,000 of it, whether we get it or not. What's a, what's a um, targeted learning recovery and universal mediation? $100,000. The Edmonton. We that did that. The, that's the exact path. That's, we did that at path. the last, last meeting. Uh, last meeting. Okay. <coughs> So I, I stand corrected. We have spent 156000 of it already, whether we've got it or not. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. So back to the motion. <coughs> Do I have a motion? We're to going through each item. Right? We're going through each item. I'd like to see each item. Are we not going through each item? Uh, the motion is only about sending the letter over for the appropriation okay. authority. Okay. Not even about this document. Well, it is about this document, but... It is just extending the authority to the board. Yeah. Am I not getting through? I'm sorry, are we going to finish the list though after that? I, there's only five things left. I just okay. want to understand Go ahead. them. Finish okay. the list. Can we finish? Go ahead. Okay, so uh, activity 1.3, I think we skipped over this, was the $13,000 that we put in for the five schools uh, for the outdoor wireless access uh, that was put in. Um, at uh, the two Southersville schools, Graysonville, Churchill, and Queen Anne's County High School. Uh, the Edmentum exact path, we, we talked about that, $100,000, $75,000 for the learning management system we talked about this evening. The professional development is uh, teachers coming in for two days of uh, mandatory training, uh, paying them at their per diem rate, $23,000, I'm, I'm sorry, $313,316 for that. Um, some miscellaneous cleaning supplies, honestly, that $2,823 was to make the budget balance. Um, we are purchasing the, as Mr. Pender alluded to earlier, electrostatic disinfectant application systems, the EM360, 15 systems at $4,700 a piece. Where's that? I'm sorry. Activity 4.1. Okay, that's the sanitizing. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. And then the supplies related to that, uh, some additional battery packs and, and, and things like that is $9,485. And then as mentioned, as uh, Ms. Harper read the letter that we do have to provide something to equitable for equitable services, which is to our non-publics. We had one non-public up in Sudlersville uh, reply uh, and are qualified to obtain funds and they are been allotted $1,540. I think they're gonna purchase some technology with it. And then as with any other um, uh, grant, there's an indirect cost rate of $18,872 to bring the total to $739,946. Okay, now my question, what is this non-public that we have? I haven't heard anything about that. Okay, so, Just in it. so with equitable services Thank through you. the Title I grants, non-publics even with it are allowed to share in the federal dollars that come through us. And there's a, a extensive application process that goes through that. And a lot of the non-publics now we're not talking non-publics like special ed, like Kennedy Krieger or something like that. We're talking about your, basically your private schools within Queen Anne's County. If they have um, farms eligible children that are going to their schools, they have through federal law, a right to access some of the title one dollars that we have. So since these are federal dollars allocated with the title one uh, methodology, we had to make those dollars available to the non-publics in Queen Anne's County. There was one, I believe it's a Christian school up in Sudlersville, was the only one that had children within the range of the Title I children, the uh, age range of the Title I children that we serve. Therefore, based on the calculation of the equitable share calculation, they're entitled to $1,540. And I believe their plan that they submitted that's part of this that is going to MSDE, um, they're gonna use that for technology for the same reasons we are, to provide distance learning opportunities. Any other questions, comments, discussion? I call for the vote on the motion to send the letter to the county commissioners for the request for the additional appropriation authority for $739,946 in federal restricted grants for the period of ending uh, June 30th, 2020 
to increase our FY 2020 restricted budget to 8 million one one six four one one. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Transfer request. So um, before you tonight, the transfer request that we are asking for your approval to, and again, this is between categories, so it requires your approval and approval of the county commissioners. As we've talked about, um, we, we know and have known for quite a long time that there was gonna be a situation in transportation where we were gonna have to cover those funds from elsewhere within, within our budget. Um, we've had some positive events happen in special ed with uh, the closure uh, that we're not transporting as many students uh, transportation wise for special ed to um, the Western shore. So we not as much of an overage as what we had anticipated back in uh, uh, February. So what before you tonight is a request to transfer $160,000 to, uh, as you've seen on the monthly reports, we're negative in that category of transportation. Um, again, related to uh, special ed student transportation. And we would also like to add $25,000 uh, for some supply and repair money as we prepare for COVID uh, for Mr. Pender in his shop to have the necessary supplies to uh, put all the safety uh, protocols in place. And then as you recall, we did get money from the um, County Health Department for our school health coordinator. So this is a request to add that actual into the budget uh, and then some additional medical supplies so we can begin to um, uh, support our school health rooms and a, a tune of $45,000. And all of that adds up to $230,000 and we would do the categorical transfer from instruction. And that's based on a reduced usage of our substitutes. Uh, the coaches obviously, uh, because of the spring sports were canceled. And as we mentioned, the model uh, for the teacher mentor program, some savings there. Um, and it would be allocated to those three other areas I mentioned before. So have any, any questions? We don't do a very good job. Well, you gotta have somebody say the motion, don't you? Yes. The motion. We do have, we have a motion. We have to make a motion, yes. The question I do have one on before we do that is that you, <clears throat> a coordinator, that's 45,000 and what, Miss Dr. Kane, that pays for the whole, that pays only half the position, right? Cause that's so part of this is for the health coordinator and the other part is for medical supplies for the health rooms. So it's about 20 for the health rooms and about 25 for the coordinator. Okay, so how are we paying for the rest of that then? This is, this is for this year? It's this is for this year. This is so I'm sorry. we have sorry, the, the, money, mm -hmm, the money for the health coordinator was allocated to us from the commissioners. So we have to access those dollars. So we'll bring those over. But the other dollars are coming from um, CNI, basically, what you see in the last line, that 230,000. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Why, why is there money available in that category? Because we haven't been using substitutes. We haven't had coaches. No, I, I knew the answer. Oh. The public might want to know. Well, he did say he said, that. I thought I, he said I, thought I explained that. that. The, uh, where it seems like either whether I was a commissioner or sitting here, that we still, despite good news in some of the disabled transportation, we're still way under budget or way over budget in actual expense. Yes, sir. And I know it's a difficult thing to, uh, to figure, but it just seems like it's a perpetual spending over budget area. It, it is, and- to Cure it, so don't look at me to cure it. Yeah. It is, and it's one of those things that's honestly, uh, to some extent, beyond our control. We have no control over where these children are placed, you know, and we have to transport them. And the time it takes the, to go yeah, back and forth yeah. is where a lot of these, and, the, and homeless, and we can only anticipate that. Yeah. And we attempted to make an adjustment in the budget book. So we introduced some moving around, some funds that we wanted to move around to start to decrease that overage, uh, even though we don't know always what it's going to be. So we didn't attempt to make some adjustment there. That's like okay. the out of, out of county placements as well. When we have children that come here or we have children that go elsewhere. Like we have two students in Anne Arundel County, I think I asked mm -hmm. you about, All right. Okay, so do I have a motion to send the transfer letter uh, to the county commissioners for the uh, amount of $230,000? Motion. So moved. I have second. Second. 
Questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to send a letter to the county commissioners requesting the transfer of $230,000. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. We typically Thank have you. to go over there and justify this, don't we? Well, he does. Yeah. That's Mr. Fister's job. All right. Next on the agenda, I've lost my agenda. Future meetings. So I have to have a motion to accept to I have I moved to I need a motion to amend the 2019-2020 meeting schedule to include uh, the possible work budget sessions of June 22nd, June 23rd, and June 24th. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. A second. What time will they be? Questions, comments, discussion. Five o'clock. Uh, the the time of starting is five o'clock. I, mean, I don't know. I do you know. Or six o'clock. Everybody's here at five. So. Five. And these are only possibilities. But we're I mean, gonna, if we we're don't need them all, then that's fine. But we're going to start with the twenty second, then we'll go for make decisions right. after that. Then we can then we can remove them from. Whether five to eight. So five to eight, possibly. Well, we'll get tonight's nine, but. Okay. So do um, any other questions, comments, discussion? Call for the vote on the motion to amend the 2019-2020 meeting schedule to include June 22nd, June 23rd, and June 24th as budget work sessions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. So you will get that d documentation to us, sir? Yes, That's awesome. Thank you. So on Monday, we'll go over the new document and then make adjustments Hopefully and then have, have some that. conversation. All right, I appreciate it. Does anyone else have anything good of the order? Hearing nothing, I call, I ask for the vote. Uh, a motion to close the open session, June I'll 17th, move. 2020. Do I have a motion? I move. I have a second. Second. Questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to close our open work session, June 20, 17th, 2020. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Strait. Thank you all for coming.